platform now. Hopefully you've set your alerts and we've moved over from the nonstop stream. Uh, we're good to go in there, guys. Everything is going well? All right. Good to go. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown. We're here uh, with our developing story on the Alabama coaching search. What is ESPN reporting, Brownie? Let's go with it. It is Adam Rittenberg of ESPN reporting that uh, Kalen DeBoer is in negotiations with Alabama to be Nick Saban's uh, predecessor to take over the Alabama coaching job. That's from uh, Adam Rittenberg, very reliable source there at ESPN. Nobody's reporting that, uh, as I've seen yet, uh, on a national level, that DeBoer has accepted it. Chris Lowe is reporting it now. Uh, Brett McMurphy also reporting it. So a lot of the national guys are reporting that it is in negotiations. Uh, so it appears that we are in the final negotiation phase um, of – the, uh, the job being Kalen DeBoer is Pete Thamel now with ESPN reporting it this way. Kalen DeBoer is on the cusp of getting the Alabama job finality expected soon. So from everything you can read here from very trusted national names and voices, it appears this is extremely close, if not already, uh, a done deal with Kalen DeBoer to Alabama. Here's how Slaybaugh and Lowe writes the story at ESPN.com. If the deal gets done, DeBoer 49, which, by the way, surprised me. I had him in about mid-50s. Does 49 surprise you? Um, he looks a little no. older. He I, looks older because he's losing his hair. I would have probably gone 51, just yeah. because coaching year is you know, a little harder than the average year. If the deal gets done, DeBoer 49 would inherit one of the most coveted jobs in college football and one of the most difficult in replacing Nick Saban, whose teams won nine SEC titles and six national championships in his 17 seasons at the school. Saban, who had a 206 and 29 record at Alabama retired back on Wednesday. Washington AD Troy Dannon has made an aggressive pitch to keep DeBoer. Sources told ESPN's Pete Thamel with a new contract that would make him one of the 10 highest paid coaches in the FBS and more than double his current annual salary of $4.2 million. You think the Alabama salary is more than double that which is 8.4 million you think it's north of that right yeah i do i think it's probably right around 10 million dollars a year and you think about it, it's making four and a half million and you're going from seattle where the cost of living is a lot more than tuscaloosa alabama so trust me Kalen DeBoer's wife uh when she starts to really process the fact that he's going to be making twice as much money in a market that probably cost you twice as less um, and, and the ability really to win a championship. He got to taste that this year. Yeah. And it was a special lightning in the bottle moment. Um, you know, he built on year one with 11 wins, going and playing for a national championship at 14 and 0. And he felt we were a player two away from that game re- being really close. The final score in the fourth quarter maybe didn't indicate how close the game was. But I think DeBoer probably weighed this out and. You know, what are the chances, you know, Washington might sneak in some 12-team playoffs, but what are the chances once they're there, they can win multiple games to get back to where he was Monday night? In Alabama, he's going to have every opportunity to do that on a consistent year-in, year-out basis. Michael writes into the chat room over here, people aren't going to believe this, but I believe this has been Greg Burns' guy from the very beginning. Chris Lowe and Slayball, and this would come from Chris Lowe because he is so tight with Jimmy Sexton, writes this in the story at ESPN.com. Um, DeBoer had emerged as the Crimson Tide's top target before three other possible candidates, Lanning, Norvell, and Sarkeesian, withdrew from the search and affirmed their commitments to their current schools over the past two days. So Chris Lowe, who is tight with Jimmy Sexton, uh, who is also the new agent of Kalen DeBoer, says he was the leading target for Alabama before the three other possible candidates. That's from Lowe. And that would be very much uh, Jimmy Sexton 101, where I've got four or five guys. I want to get raises. Uh, you're, this is your number one choice. Hold, hold your water. Let me get these other guys more money, and then we'll make the announcement. And I will leak it and let everybody know that really it was your number one choice anyway. And, Brown, you know people are going to say, uh, outside of the Alabama fan base, this wasn't their first choice. They had to settle on Kalen DeBoer. I just hope Greg Burns a straight shooter, and I hope if, in fact, this was the guy that he targeted the whole time, which I thought it should have been the guy. I know nothing. Um, I just feel like this is going to be a slam yeah. dunk hire. Hopefully, Byrne would come out and say, hey, look, we want a Kalen DeBoer all along. Well, Nobody will. else got offered this yeah. job. Yeah, he'll make it, whether true or not, 
as um, to do your guy right, if nothing else, the guy that you've hired, Greg Byrne, whenever Kalen DeBoer, uh, if indeed these negotiations get to the finish line, uh, whenever he is introduced, it will be Greg Byrne standing up saying, this guy was our first choice. Your opposing fan bases and members of the media are going to say this was the fourth choice because they've seen um, Dan Lanning very publicly do a victory lap on a contract extension. Mike Norvell very publicly do a victory lap. Steve Sarkeesian very publicly do a victory lap. There's no guarantee any or one of those guys was offered the job. Um, so, you know, your opposing fan base because oh, Alabama got their fourth choice. Look, if you're Greg Byrne, if you're Caleb Boy, you can't worry about that kind of crap. He, you know, he could be the fifth choice. If he goes in and wins three national championships at Alabama, what the crap does that matter? You know, I'm looking, and, and I'm just gauging this on what I'm seeing in the chat room. It seems about 80% positive, 20% negative. I think by Monday it'll be 95-5. I think people will embrace. They'll start to do a little more due diligence. They'll find out exactly who Kalen DeBoer is. Just because he's a Midwest guy that is coaching in Seattle now and doesn't have any Southern ties doesn't mean anything to me. Nick Saban once was from West Virginia – a Midwest guy that didn't have any Southern ties. Um, Kalen DeBoer is a Midwest guy that never had any Pacific Northwest ties. And in year one, he wins 11 games. And in year two, he's playing for a national championship. The guy will have every resource at his disposal. Um, The collective will be night and day from what he's got in Washington. He'll still be able to utilize the portal. He will get savage ass recruiters on that staff. He's going to have to. I mean, that to me, and I know you you don't seem terribly concerned about it. It is. I think the guy could flat out coach. He's shown that everywhere. He's to been. me, more of a concern is what are you going to lose in the portal? You know, we're well, hearing guys like Isaiah Bond is already possibly going to Texas. No, well, yeah, he's, he's already in the portal. The portal. And, Texas is a visit coming up, and yeah. a lot of people are pointing out, and this is moving very fast on Twitter. So it's going to uh, it's going to take me a second to find it. But here it is, Julian saying responded to Isaiah Bond or, you know, uh, sent him a message on social media, quote, where are we going, twin? So a lot of people are worried, oh, my God, your top uh, quarterback recruit now at least appears, and I would tell people to be very slow about reading into social media posts, at least appears we'll be considering also testing the transfer portal. I I would ask Isaiah Bond, um, when you look at receivers this past year, who – who had a better receiving core than Washington? Nobody. I mean, they didn't. I mean, you know, your your traditional great wide receiver core, as good as Marvin Harrison Jr. was, and Abeka being that number two guy, it wasn't what you had. When you had a 100% healthy uh, Adunze, Jalen Polk, and Jalen McMillan, those were the one through three best receivers in college football. Yeah, I believe that too. If you don't know anything about Kalen DeBoer, and you're just an Alabama fan who loves Alabama football, he is a South Dakota native, and I'm going to go on a limb and say he is the first South Dakota native to ever be the head coach at the University of Alabama. Probably you think, you think first so? South Dakota native to become an SEC head coach? Maybe. A record-setting receiver. He played the game at receiver. I'm pretty important there. Isaiah at Bond needs a call, doesn't he? University of Sioux Falls, an NAIA program in his home state. DeBoer became the head coach in 2005 of his old school Sioux Falls, and over the next five seasons, his teams went 67 and 3 and won three NAIA national championships in 6, 8 and 9. Problem in 07 is they had Mark Ingram and the quarterback coming back and McElroy and that great offensive line they couldn't finish the deal. <laughs> yeah, people <laughs> over South there. Carolina, it's a joke about yeah. Alabama's run with Saban in 9, 11 and 12, 6, 8 and 9. There's that missing uh, game there in 7 where they probably he came in and said forget about it. we're never looking in the rearview mirror again, guys. I've seen this pop up a bunch. Well, Alabama doesn't have a Penix Jr. You guys need to remember when Penix had his one really good year in Bloomington, Kalen DeBoer was there. Um, Penix was in the portal. Nobody really wanted him. DeBoer knew what he could make of Michael Penix Jr. He comes in, and over the last couple of years, he's been one of the top three quarterbacks in college football. You're Alabama now. It's hard for Washington to go out and get marquee quarterbacks right now when they're competing with schools like Georgia and Alabama and USC. He's going to be just fine at the quarterback position. Pete Thamel of ESPN.com uh, follows up on his tweet that Alabama's on the cusp of hiring Kalen DeBoer. By any, I want you to notice he's obviously talking in past tense here. So in Pete's mind, this deal is over. Washington made a strong push to keep Kalen DeBoer, attempting to make him one of the country's top 10 coaches per sources. 
They offer to double his current base of $4.2 million before bonuses. If you want to try to, first of all, I, I, I point out again, Pete talking entirely in past tense in that tweet, which tells you Pete thinks it's a done deal. But if you want to put into perspective kind of what you might be looking at salary-wise for Kalen DeBoer, it appears he's walking away from eight and a half to nine million dollars at a place where he was a he was a king. I mean, I think he was beloved at Washington so far. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about earlier with just the yep. cost of living. Uh, the offer from Bama is going to be nine million north, and then you just add in cost of living. It's almost an insane amount of spending money, money he'll be able to put in the bank. And let's not forget this: Washington is going to be on a revenue share. Not at 100% when they enter the Big Ten. And I forgot exactly. Maybe you guys can remind me how many years that's going to be before they get their fair share it, of it, Big Ten membership. I think it was an extended period of time, wasn't it? It I, wasn't like tomorrow. I think it was. I want to yeah. say eight years. Am I wrong? Eight, I want to say it's whenever the new playoff contract is negotiated. And I think that's about eight years. And you guys, we don't know. We know Washington's going to be in the perceived second best conference in college football. Do we know what Washington's going to be in the Big Ten? No. We know what Alabama is in the SEC. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, you Alabama can, is the brand in the SEC. No, if you can get it right, if you're Kalen DeBoer, and I'm not even saying continuing what Nick Saban did, I think that's an unrealistic expectation of anyone. You could have hired Kirby Smart, and I don't know that he could continue what Nick Saban did, and Kirby's probably the best coach in the game right now. I mean, it's the best run in college football history. So well, That's right. You don't usually have the best run in college football history followed up by the best run in college football history. But Southern Illinois, where he was the OC, Eastern Michigan, Fresno State, and Indiana were his OC stop. Then he replaced Jeff Tefford at Fresno State, then moved on to Washington, where he's had great success, including, by the way, playing in the national championship. You know, <laughs> go, uh, going back to the Sioux Falls story that yeah. Dunaway was telling us he made sandwiches for the players. I mean, you talk about a guy that grinded and earned. We were talking about Eric Spolstra, who's got the richest contract in North American sports history on paper and how he grinded from a video assistant in 95 to where he is now. You look at DeBoer, it's that same kind of track record. I mean, he did everything he had to do to earn a living to get to the point he's at right now, and he's been successful in every single stop. Do you think um, his first head coach during commercial breaks, he'll think he needs to get up and bust tables or something? I mean, he'll settle into the role of being a SEC coach at some point, right? I, I think he will. Um, and look, we're about to have Brock Heward on, who's a former Washington quarterback, does mornings in Seattle, knows Kalen DeBoer ex exceptionally well, was at the game Monday night, Michigan and Washington. And he was one of the guys that was singing his praises for the last couple of years. So he'll give you kind of a behind the scenes on what you're getting with Kalen DeBoer. But I'll tell you this, I really believe Greg Byrne, if this in fact is 1,000% done, uh, Alabama fans should show their gratitude because Greg Byrne earned his money and then some today. You have said this from the beginning. If you're new to the show, you're just jumping on with the breaking news here. This is not Lance trying to polish an Alabama hire that might get some criticism or not. I don't know yet. This is what you've said from day one. You ought to target Kalen DeBoer. You, you said that a long time he, ago. He, he never sees a moment that's too big. And, you know, going into the – and this is the one time I doubted him this year, the rematch with Oregon. Because Oregon had more talent on the roster. Would you guys give me that outside of the receiver position? Oh, I thought they – I thought they was – I thought I thought Oregon was going to win both those games. They didn't win either one of them. Washington was better at quarterback and receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. But Bo yeah. Nix was really good this year. Yeah, he was. But I think Penix was better. But Caleb DeBoer and his team were the only ones that believed they could beat Oregon in that rematch. And they went out there and they dominated wire to wire. Yeah, Chris Lowe says the deal should be finalized soon and points out DeBoer has won 11 or more games in seven of his nine seasons as a head coach. So that's from Chris Lowe, who uh, has his finger on the pulse of almost every coaching search in America and says the deal should be done soon. And, I, and one of those seasons, by the way, Brown, was the 2020 season where they only played six games. His first year at Fresno, you got you to flush that. Oh, they yeah, were three yeah, and three. Yeah, you throw that out. So eight of nine, he has won double-digit games. Uh, okay, so as we continue our coverage here, uh, reports have Kalen DeBoer in line to follow Nick Saban. The only thing left is to sign the contract. But from Chris Lowe to Pete Thamel to Mark Slaybaugh, 
uh, and everyone else in between, including Adam Rittenberg. Uh, Kalen DeBoer is the next coach at Alabama with just signatures and final negotiations left to do. All brought to you by our friends at Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Our continuous coverage here now on the Next Round platform. So one thing uh, that I find very interesting is what is Washington's next move here? So for those maybe that haven't followed it that closely, uh, Kalen DeBoer's offensive coordinator is a guy named Ryan Grubb. When Alabama was in the market for an offensive coordinator about this time last year, it appeared for a minute like Ryan Grubb had taken that job. Flew to town. Yeah, yeah. It was in Tuscaloosa. It was Alabama's, I think, Nick Saban's top choice there for Ryan Grubb. So, you know, if you're an Alabama fan, I think you're thrilled if Ryan Grubb comes. I think Alabama fans were excited about getting him. You're shaking your head. Yeah, I don't Why? think it's going to happen. I mean, well, that, that was going to be the other yeah. side of this is, you know, the way this thing normally happens is you got it clicking at Washington. Now, Washington's a good job going to the Big Ten, but – they may just promote Ryan Grubb, and now what he's going to do is he's going to go to that staff, and the defensive backs coach is going to be, you know, why are you going to Tuscaloosa to be DB's coach? Stay here and be my defensive coordinator. The wide receivers coach, why are you going to Tuscaloosa just coach receivers? Stay here and be my offensive oh, coordinator. Oh, they've gone to lunch together before, and yeah. they're like, if I'm ever head coach, yeah. you're going to be my yeah. DC. Right. Oh, there's no doubt. And, 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 but I think that's and we're going to change the uniform. We're going to wear white helmets. But I think that's big for those that might be worried, if this is a concern of Kalen DeBoer's, that he is just going to take that Washington staff, try to move it to Tuscaloosa, and you got no recruiting base. There's probably going to be a couple openings on that staff because of things like that. And I think – the one thing to talk about, you were talking about recruiting earlier, is I think Kalen DeBoer is going to have to go hire some mercenaries. Yeah, and look, some of those guys could be on the staff. I, I fully believe Ryan Grubb is going to be the next Washington head coach. Uh, you you do have to have – Harson tried to bring that entire staff from Boise. Um, that was kind of a disaster from day one. I don't think you'll see that with DeBoer. And look, uh, we said this a couple of days ago. How involved was Nick Saban with this hire? Um, I doubt he wanted to be too involved, but I guarantee he lended a hand. And I don't think there's any doubt with Saban having office on campus is still going to uh, be around that program a little bit. I guarantee he fully endorses a guy like Caleb DeWar. Yeah, I, w- I would say this. Chris writes in uh, over in our chat, uh, brought to you by our friends at Bud Light. Is, he says I, the OC will have to adjust to what we have. I don't know about that. Um, in Tuscaloosa. They've got better at, hey, look, again, the receivers were incredible last year. They had an experienced, the second most experienced quarterback in all of college football. And the running game was really good as well. Yeah, Dylan Johnson was good. The offensive line was good, but you're still going to have much better personnel if you can retain 70% of what Alabama's got on their current roster. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. There, you're, there are some key guys you're going to want to talk to. I mean, you're very quickly probably going to want to sit down and talk to Jalen Milrow. Let me let me start there with Milrow. You you we all watched a lot of uh, Washington football. Do you different quarterback? It it is. And I was going to ask you about you know how big a difference is the gap between what Penix was doing and what Milrow was doing. I mean, it's a well. Here's the thing: Penix wasn't one of these great athletic guys. He could extend plays. He had great pocket presence. Jalen Milrow is a different quarterback. But the thing that they have in common is the ability to throw the deep ball. And DeBoer loves taking those deep shots. So if you're Jalen. You know, if you're if you're Kalen DeBoer and you want to retain Jalen Milrow as your quarterback, all you got to do is throw in some film and say, look at what we did for Penix. Yeah. You're a Heisman runner up last year, and you look at the downfield shots we took. This is what we expect of you. Look, Jalen is a guy that's going to work his ass off, you know, in the offseason. He's going to work on things he needs to, which are second and third reads, which are throwing intermediate and short routes. And when it all comes together, I don't know a player that developed more from September – through December than Jalen Milrow in all of college football. All right, 140 Central Time Live. We know we have Brock Heward from uh, up in Seattle joining us uh, in just a little bit, maybe about 10 minutes from now, five minutes from now. Uh, the mix in the Bud Light chat room over there is crazy, uh, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Everywhere from a home run hire to you guys just hired Brian Harson. Yeah. Um, you guys just hired Mike Pro Coming from Washington again, keep him away from destiny. Well, I mean, I can't a, believe he's getting him. I just want people to go back and look at Boise from Chris Peterson to Brian Harson. And the only thing I credited Auburn on that hire was it was out of the box and it wasn't part of the Auburn family. But I never, and Brown, I remember you were in the basement with me and I remember pulling all these numbers and saying, this is a guy. I thought you were too hard on him. That did a B job at an A plus yeah. group five program. 
and now you've got the complete opposite. You've got Kalen DeBoer that took over what was – from Jimmy Lake, it was kind of a disaster for those two years, but I'll still say it was a B program, and he did an A-plus job. And now he gets one of the top two, three, four jobs in all of college football. Guys, give him a chance. I don't think there's going to be any fall off. Um, I would put Alabama's win total next year at 10. I think he's 10-2 and two next year. I think they're in a college football playoff year one, unless this roster gets completely depleted. Okay. Let, let's. I'm going to step back there real quick. Okay. You don't okay. think there's going to be any fall off? I mean, qualify that now. I mean, there's oh. going to be natural fall off. You mean? I I, I. I. mean, look. I think you're going to be a college football playoff. I think you well, can yeah. win the SEC next year. Let's not forget, Kalen Bohr won 11 games, taking over what was a complete mess. He is taking over arguably the second or third best team in all of college football, yeah. at least with the roster this year. But I mean. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think Caitlin DeBoer will have them contending for the playoff frequently. I'm just saying, you know, there is going to be a natural fall off. I'm, I'm, I'm just pointing that out with anybody. Yeah. By the way, I'm not aggravated with anybody. That, look, everybody's got their opinion. Yeah. Uh, nothing is for well, sure. Why here, who said you're aggravated? Some people said I was aggravated. I'm not aggravated. I think this is a great moment for oh. for Alabama to go from the greatest coach of all time to be able to get a guy like Caitlin DeBoer. You're not going to be able to replicate what Nick Saban did. Nobody's going to ever be able to do that. I just think this is your best candidate out there that was realistic <laughs> I, I forget aggravated i wanted to know i want to know who your sources are because you've been telling me all year nick saban was going to retire after this year and then you said when the search started before we even did the first show you said kaylin DeBoer is the guy that's the guy they should go get and saban has retired and kaylin DeBoer is the guy i want to know either what you're eating for breakfast <laughs> or who you're talking to well i talk to this guy every single week and and this guy will hype him up more than i will and he's uh, played in the NFL forever. Uh, you see him on the Fox broadcast. You see him on Unlocked on the Disrupt the Media uh, family of podcasts. Brock Heward now joins us. Uh, I don't know if you're still in Missoula. I know you watched your girls last night play a little basketball for the Grizz. Um, but it is real. Yeah. It is going down. You know Caleb DeBoer. You got to know him for the last couple of years. He did a A-plus job at taking over kind of a messy situation from Jimmy Lake. A lot of Alabama fans – have come over the last 48 hours to embrace this higher sand. Hell yeah, we like this. There is still Alabama fans that believe this is Brian Harson 2.0 at Auburn. You tell Alabama fans what they are getting with Kalen DeBoer. Yeah, this is not Brian Harson 2.0. Kalen DeBoer has been a lot of places. His track record is impeccable. Brian Harson, uh, a good coach at Boise, but he was in the line of a lot of good coaches at Boise. There are a lot of guys that won there. Not many guys that win in Eastern Michigan. Not many guys that win at Indiana. Not many guys that win in the first head coaching job at Fresno the way that he did. And certainly not many, in fact, zero the way that he did at the University of Washington in his first two seasons. So the comp to Harson, that is, uh, that's lazy. That's just, oh, up from the Pacific Northwest. That is, uh, that could not be a worse comp. And that's nothing against Brian. I like Brian. I think he's a good coach. But uh, his track record, his resume is nothing compared to Kalen. And I think one of the biggest difference here, guys, is I was just reflecting on this on my drive back from Costco. It's going to be bitter cold. <laughs> i got a couple briskets going to smoke all weekend long. And when I'm sinking back to it, this isn't um, this isn't just hiring Kalen DeBoer. If this was just hiring Kalen, then maybe they – would have ratcheted the money up more for Norvell or Sark or who who knows one of you know Jimmy Sexton's other clients, but I think what Saban realizes is I'm sure he advised Greg Byrne is you're not getting Kalen DeBoer, you're getting the whole village, you're getting the whole crew, you're getting Ryan Grubb who you wanted last year, you're getting the defensive staff that's been together, you're getting a tremendous receiver coach and just look at the body of work and evidence with what he's done elevating his guys. So that had to be kind of like Lance Leopold has been at his different stops. That's why Kalen had so much success so quickly at Washington. And I think, frankly, that's why Kalen said no to Seattle and yes to Tuscaloosa. Not just for looking in the mirror at Kalen DeBoer, but looking right behind in that mirror at Ryan, at Chuck, at Coach Inge, at Jamarcus, at Huff, at all the guys that I'm more than likely assured he's going to bring with him right down there to T-Town. So, I and Brock Heward is with us, the former Washington quarterback, now with Fox Sports. I and, blew uh, you away, didn't I? Look at you. You're speechless. I just blew you away. No, no, no. no. Well, I was going to ask this uh, later on in the interview, but since you brought it up now, I mean, we were just talking about the fact that Ryan Grubb would seem to be 
the next man up. So you 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 feel like it may be like stock and barrel, everybody going to Tuscaloosa? I think so. Yeah, okay. and, that, and that's not any wow. you know sourced information. But Ryan Grubb's not going to be the head coach, the next head coach of Washington. Okay, they're going to have to get they're going to have to get somebody with head coaching experience. You don't go to that mountaintop. You don't go into the Big Ten. You don't follow Kalen. You know, and that's nothing against Ryan Grubb, but with a first time head coach, you've been there and done that a couple years ago, and you were four and eight. <laughs> and that's Brian why Brennan? somebody. I think they really like Brennan. I, I think he's uh, – I, I know that he was really high up on the list last time. But, no, I think you're looking at somebody with, with head coaching experience. Who that is, there's some things I can't quite share with you. Um, there's some some names out there. But, I yeah, I would be very, very surprised if it's not somebody that's been there and done it before just because of the mountaintop that they are currently on, the previous experience they had. And, yeah, I would think that this is Kalen and a whole bunch of that village coming with them. Yeah, national championship uh, game participant runner-ups going to the Big Ten. And that Big Ten move for Washington is huge because that gives them a secure place in college football's future. Brock Heward is with us as this uh, breaking news story. Alabama's next coach, not official yet, but it seems to be in line that Kalen DeBoer will follow Nick Saban uh, in Tuscaloosa. For the, for, and you break down tapes a lot. For Nick Saban's yeah. style of football, and he's adjusted it a lot over his time in Tuscaloosa to Kalen DeBoer's style of playing the game. Can you tell me one difference if you say the last version of Saban in Tuscaloosa to the way Kalen likes to play the game? Yeah, I mean, just different. One is a uh, is sees it through an offensive optics and lens in Kalen, but he's hyper aggressive. Nick's hyper aggressive. He just does it with a little bit more of the defensive bend that has been his background, and and that would probably be the one thing that they've got to get better. And I think Kalen would say, "Man, at Washington, we can get receivers. I'm going to get quarterbacks, running backs. We've developed offensive linemen, but man, getting those difference makers on defense and maybe even play in Michigan, right? Seeing it at the very highest level, Texas and then Michigan, you know, um, Lance and I have talked a lot about it in, in previewing these games over the last couple of weeks and defensively on the roster of Washington versus Texas, you would have taken nine of the 11 Longhorns defensively, Michigan versus Washington. You would have taken nine of the 11 if not 10 of the 11 Wolverines. And now you go to Alabama and just the supply chain of human beings down there in the South at the defensive line, the linebacker, you know, you can get the alignment, you can get linebackers, you can get corners, you can get safeties. Couldn't get that at Washington. That, that was going to be the great challenge. He overcame it with a lot of veterans. He overcame it with an unbelievable QB and an offense this year. But I think over the long haul, he says, and his staff say to him, Hey, Kalen, I don't know if you look, but cupboard's pretty full down there. Tuscaloosa, there's some dudes that we don't got on our roster here at Washington and certainly not into next year. And uh, and he didn't have it Fresno and he didn't have it Southern Illinois and he didn't have it Sioux Falls and he didn't have it Eastern Michigan and he didn't have it Indiana. And yeah, he's going to have quite an arsenal to work with. Well, and you said one of the more appealing things was he's bringing the entire village. And I think Alabama fans are super excited about Ryan Grubb. But I brought up the – well, let me back up. A lot of the people that don't like to hire, like, dudes from the Midwest, was in the Pacific Northwest, he can't recruit the Southeast. First of all, the Southeast is the most fertile recruiting ground in the world. Um, I brought up he's going to have to get some SEC ties. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. That's just – you know, you would think that you would have some familiarity. Um, yeah. I yeah. mean, do you think recruiting's a problem? No. Nope, I don't. I, if this were five years ago, I think we'd have a different conversation. Heck, even when he was hired at Washington, you know, a lot of the locals there kind of paying the move. Kalen, who? What? You never got went to a press conference. You know, not going to be able to recruit. That, that's not the world we live in anymore. You know, it, it it's just not. And it's why he made. You know, I think this move too five years ago. Does this make sense? No. Does it make sense today? Yes. Because recruiting is not just recruiting high school kids. Recruiting is called the transfer portal. Recruiting is called, let me see your pelts on the wall. Recruiting is called, let me see your first rounders and your second rounders and your third rounders. Oh, okay, so there goes Roma Dunze. There goes Braitlin Trice. There goes Troy Fautanu. There goes Michael Penix. There goes Jalen McMillan. There goes Jalen Polk. There go on and on and on. And he just had two years to do that and build that at Washington. So, no, if he had to recruit 25 kids from South Carolina and Georgia and Florida and Alabama and go toe-to-toe with all of the dudes that are networked in the SEC, okay, fine. That might be problematic five years ago. 
This is now national. This is now portal. This is now NIL. It is a totally different dynamic, and it's what can you do for me to get me to the league? And oh, by the way, win games, but get me to the league. Exactly what Saban did at a rate nobody's ever done in college football. You're a uh, proud girl dad, uh, and so is yes. Kalen. And Washington has a proud softball program. Alabama's got a proud softball program. Kalen's daughter, Alexis, was a top 10 or 15 recruit mm -hmm. at any they position. Better you better make room. You better make room, Bama. You better roll that over was and make one, some room. One call from yeah, Saban. Sure that was room was made. That roster. Yeah, and uh, I would. He, he said he was looking forward, according to reports, Brandon Marcello said he was looking forward to walking across the street uh, and watching his daughter play there in Seattle. So uh, yeah. you know the guy. Seems like a family guy. Maybe Alabama softball also gets Alexis too. I would have to think so. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be 3,000 miles away. And, and let me just kind of land on that here too. Um, paint the picture for you all as I've gotten really close to them. You're going to find this, that uh, when and, and you guys gain relationship because you're so good at what you do and you get his cell phone, you text him and it won't be more than 10 minutes. Anybody. And that's not just me. That is everybody that I talk to. Like, can you believe? Like he gets back to can you believe that he just you know reaches back out can you believe chris fowler told this story on our morning show a couple weeks ago and it just so perfectly to me encapsulates and paints a picture of who you're getting he's on the practice field this was this was before their first game with oregon herbie and fowler did five games of the huskies this year herbie came on my show five times because he loved kaylin and the program that much but uh, they're out on the practice field and and they walk over to kaylin Chris does and says, hey, hey, Kalen, I, you know, and before he can get out, Kalen says, hey, Chris, you know, I'm, I'm Kalen DeBoer, man. Really nice to meet you. Thanks for thanks for being here. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you don't introduce yourself to me. Let me introduce my, I know who you are. You don't know, you, but that's just who he is. I mean, that is genuinely like Tom Brady walking up to guys in the locker room like, hey, hello, man. Welcome to New England. I'm Tom Brady. Like, no, we know who you are. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that's just, that's kind of just genuine I like to say salt of the earth, that South Dakota, South Dakota soil that never has left him. And um, that, not scheme with Nick, <laughs> not even style of play and aggressiveness with Coach Saban, but that just kind of uh, just genuine, relational, uh, want, you know, want to get to know everybody. He, he's a little different, and I have a feeling Alabama folks are going to love him. Uh, before you jumped on, I was talking about the rematch in the Pac-12 championship with Oregon. And that was the one time I doubted him. And talking to you before it, and I still liked Oregon in that game going into it, but you said this guy thinks he is going to win every game before they play the game. And you look at his record against ranked opponents up until that Michigan game, it was, it was perfect. And just tell us about the confidence and the preparation from a guy like Caleb DeBoer. I think two things there, Lance, pop into my mind as you say that. Number one, in our market in Seattle now, in 48 hours, we've lost Pete Carroll and Kalen DeBoer. <laughs> one was tough. there 14 years, one was there two years. A yeah. little, little different you know, as far as the length, and one won a Super Bowl in Pete and took us to heights. We've never been, all, all of that stuff. But they're dead similar in that they look for the best in their players. And when I said that to you about, he didn't think about the downside. And he said that before. And so he went for it on fourth down at his own 28-yard line Apple Cup, where if he doesn't get it, Probably not talking about this. You know, we're probably not having this conversation. He doesn't get a rematch with Oregon. He doesn't get to beat Texas. He doesn't get to play in the national title game and do all of that. And when I pressed him on it and talked to him both per personally and privately, like, yeah, I don't think about the downside of that. You know, I, I am so focused in and we're, we're good. We're locked and we're loaded. We've practiced this. We've repped it. We know it. And we fully believe in our guys. And much like Pete Carroll, just, you know, fully instilled that confidence and belief in people. Uh, Kalen does the exact same thing. In the other area, they're similar. And and this will be kind of interesting. And it'll be a little bit of an adjustment for him because Seattle and Fresno and those other spots are not Tuscaloosa. But in everywhere he has been, it has not been Kalen DeBoer's team. It has been the locker room's team. It is their team. And he gives it to those guys. Again, much like Pete Carroll. Personality is vastly different. Different humans, all of that stuff. But as far as culture building, positivity, believing the best in people, and then really having player-led teams. And I hope that that was on display for all of you fans in Alabama as you watch Washington. Like, man, even when Roger Rosengarten got a critical hold, what did you see? All his teammates right there, picking him up, loving him, patting him on the butt. We're good. 
right? That that team had such a, gosh, such a belief in one another and a care factor for one another that uh, that will be intriguing to me to see how that plays out in, in a place where the standard is obviously very, very unique. Uh, we'll send you our T-shirt, Da Bear to Da Goat to Da Boar. We'll, <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put that in the mail today to you. It's good, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yep. That's, yeah. that's pretty good. Uh, I haven't been thought, asleep in two days, so it, it works that way. Brock, if people thought I was a, a hype man for Kalen DeBoer, I'm JV compared to you, by the way. So I think you've excited Alabama fans. Well, again, I don't know about that whole village thing. I just know enough that it would surprise me that this is just Kalen's decision and he's going to leave anybody that, that, that you know journeyed together with him to the mountaintop. And the reason, and the biggest reason, I said this to you guys a ton, and and, and Lance, uh, you and I have gotten closer over the last you know four or five months talking every week, is, is that he just, he, he it's not about him. He's egoless and he empowers the people around him. And he knows, he knows it's the system. He knows it's that group. He knows it's those men that have done this together, that time on task that is so critical in today's college football. So I don't think you're just getting Kalen DeBoer. I think you're taking all of that on and why Greg Byrne went out and got him, wanted him, pursued him, and uh, and ultimately took him for my alma mater. Thanks. Well, the Appreciate good news that. for your alma mater is Chris Lowe's reporting it's a $12 million buyout, so they didn't take him cheap. No, they didn't, and that will uh, help as they yep. you know, get a half share moving into the Big Ten. And, yeah, it'll be intriguing, but I would be really shocked if it's not somebody with – Head coaching experience that uh, that has to now fill the shoes of one Kalen DeBoer in Seattle as so, well. So who's paying you more next year, Alabama or Fox? That's uh, that's the question for the Washington Athletic Department, right? Yeah, that's yep. That's good. That's a good <laughs> that's question, good. boys. That's a good question. I'm excited for you guys, and hopefully this will continue to keep us close because I've had an absolute blast uh, over over the years. You know, so yeah. being kind of your West Coast affiliate and everything else. But uh, <laughs> yeah, now somebody with some uh, relationship and somebody that I've just grown very like so many, and and I'm not alone in that. 250 alums were down there. You know, and uh, it was pretty neat on the day of the championship game. Um, they had the 91 team at a function, and Coach Peterson was there, and Kalen was there. And Chris Peterson was like, how is Kalen DeBoer here? Like on the day of a game, I, but he just genuinely cared about all those people, those former players, all of those relationships. And I promise you, you are going to say it once and you say it a hundred times. This guy is the genuine article. All right. He is uh, Brock Heward. You know how we feel about you as well, Brock. We very much appreciate you. And uh, thank you for jumping on on short notice like that. It is much appreciated. You got it, boys. Enjoy the brisket. We'll be in touch. Yep. Take care. Uh, Brock (laughs) with us, uh, Fox Sports. He's he's got to cook it. He didn't buy it at Bucky's. Brock, uh, Fox Sports also does still sports radio. Uh, there in, uh, in, in, in Seattle. And of course, if you don't know Brock's history, played quarterback at Washington, Washington alum, and is very close to Kalen DeBoer. I don't know uh, many people we know that are closer to Kalen than Brock Ewan. Yeah. And, and, and look, I mean, that guy's salt to the earth, and he's not one of those that's just going to hype a guy to hype a guy. I think Alabama fans, I think it is interesting that you seem to have what could be an elite, elite coach, but him talking about there's no ego. And when you talk about some of these other coaches you were going to hire, specifically a guy Lane Kiffin, like a guy like Lane Kiffin, it is a complete night and day personality. Okay, here we go. Um, this this is a stat that I find interesting. Is uh, you sit here and you look at Brett McMurphy's tweet, and you've got of the top Alabama candidates, Kalen DeBoer was five and zero versus Dan Lanning and Steve Sarkeesian in his two years as the head coach at Washington. 5-0 and o versus two other of the top candidates on the Alabama list in Landing and Sarkeesian. That's a, that's a, a meaningful stat. Jesse Simonton um, on three sports, and this is, this is a good perspective for those, and I've said this, that are like, this guy's from Pacific Northwest, how's he going to, re- you know, he's got to learn to recruit or whatever the case might be. He said, let me just remind you, Urban Meyer wasn't from the South, and last I checked, he had zero issue recruiting to Florida, right? Right. I mean, you get in a fertile recruiting area, and you figure it out. And look, again, and I can't remember Meyer's first staff. I can't remember who he brought with him, who he left behind. Uh, I know some guys were left behind at Utah. But I do think it is critical to find some guys that are, uh, that are experienced recruiters at the Southeastern Conference. And by the way, you got some of those guys on that current Alabama staff. I mean, there's, you know, there, there's, there's some good coaches on that staff that if there's a staff spot open and 
you've got the desire. You talk to those guys right away, and you convince them, you got to help me win this locker room over to me. These guys don't know me. They might have watched me play in the national championship game, humble brag, but they don't know me. you got to help me, T-Rob or whoever that assistant might be, win this locker room over. Yeah, oh, 100%. And, you know, would you be running for the port? I, like, I know guys are going to you, – you've got 28 days left, and – you can play Alabama and shake them down again. But would you not be like, oh, damn, this guy just played for a national championship. And if I'm a receiver like Isaiah Bond, I look at what those receivers did this year. No, I, I look at I look at the style of play, and I think to myself, I want to play in that style of play. But I will, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think everyone uses their leverage every year now. So this is an opportunity for the Alabama players to get more money out of I Alabama, get that, but I'm just saying, or I don't, more money out of somewhere else. Yeah, I don't think they've all bolted yet. Like I think Alabama fans can like pull back and at least see how the next week or so goes. Yeah, yeah. I and you know normally you would say, well, you want to see what your value is in the portal. These guys know their value. They've already been approached by coaches before they ever enter the portal. It's not like. Isaiah Bond jumps in the portal today, and then all of a sudden all these schools start calling him saying, oh, Isaiah, we're interested in you. The reason he's in the portal is because he's already gotten that interest, right? Or it's one of the reasons. I'm not going to say it's the sole reason. So, you know, it's not one of those things where you get in there to see what your value is. You know what your value is. Um, why do guys do it when they've got all this time? I really don't know. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, Lance. Yeah. But like you, you, you watch. You, you, you got to re-recruit them back, though. I do know that. I mean, you watched Washington. I mean, both of you guys watched Washington a lot. I mean, you you could not not watch them. They were a top ten team all year and played for the national championship. But Dunaway, as an Alabama fan, I mean, it is different from what you got with Nick Saban, and you knew that was a one hundred percent slam dunk. But I mean, are you happy as a Bama fan? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, it. I've been happy before, and it hasn't worked out. But I love a guy who you know, can coach a program. I'll go with this saying right here. It does because if you're coaching in the NIA, NAIA, you're playing with NAIA players. I just firmly believe that winners win. And this guy wins wherever he's at. He has won. And I believe winners win and they surround themselves with the winners. Nick Saban won at Toledo. He won as a coordinator. He won everywhere he went. He won. I just believe winners win, and Kalen DeBoer's a winner. Again, all the reports from all the trusted voices in college football right now are that uh, this is cl very close to the finish line. Negotiations going on between Alabama and Kalen DeBoer. Our coverage of this presented exclusively by our friends at Bud Light. Brandon Marcello joins us now, 24-7 Sports. Brandon follows the national college football scene as well as anyone and is always kind with his time with us. Welcome in, Brandon. How are you today? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, you've you've followed this. Um, when you see that Kalen DeBoer and Alabama are at the finish line, your reaction to that will be what? Uh, not too surprising. The way after the way things kind of transpired yesterday uh, afternoon, um, uh, yesterday uh, in the morning, we're getting word that there was really three guys in the mix: uh, Norvell, DeBoer, and then Tommy Reese had been pushed by Saban and others to get an interview to get some consideration. Uh, and uh, Norvell, I'm told there was, there was some discussions, discussions with him. Uh, those cooled quickly and uh, they moved on to DeBoer uh, uh, to try and see if they can get something done. All these top names that have been talked about, uh, Jimmy Sexton agent, uh, uh, is the agent for all of them. <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, wait, um, I got to pick myself up off the floor. <laughs> I'm floored. Well, here's the thing. Uh, DeBoer up until this year was not a Sexton guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, two weeks ago, I, I found out that he was a Sexton guy. I was in New Orleans covering that, and I spent some time with Kalen and, and his crew. And it's interesting that uh, – um, you know, he's a guy that, and I just I wrote a story about this. I'm actually about to republish it uh, about how he's a guy that never pursued jobs. He never went after him, and people would pursue him, and he always was like, "No, I'm happy where I'm at." And then just two weeks ago, he was telling me about how uh, he wasn't interested in the Texas A&M job because he didn't want to move uh, because his daughter is about to play softball at the University of Washington, and the softball field. He says it's just 100 yards away from his office, and he's looking forward to being able to walk over there and watch her. And he said, listen, we have moved around a lot 
the last five to six years and I want to stay here. Um, but again, it, it's Alabama. I mean, how the heck do you say no to Alabama where you have so much more in the way of resources, you're in a much better conference, or I should say conference, much better positioning in the conference. They're going into their first year in the Big Ten. Their roster is decimated after going to the college football playoff national championship. Uh, this is a situation that really is a no-brainer for a lot of people. And, of course, this was a job that where they were going to pursue the top names that have that type of experience. And, and two Mike things. Bell, of course, being one, and Dan Lanning. And uh, th- this is a, it's, it's a great hire. My only concern, guys, is – the recruiting aspect of it. You know, their recruiting class, I think, is in the 30s or 40s out at Washington. He's never coached in the South. Uh, I'm not making comparisons to Brian Harson when he was hired <laughs> at Auburn, but very similar to those circumstances. He just he doesn't have those connections in the South, but here's what he is going to have. He's going to have Nick Saban with an office there on campus giving him any advice. Here's how our recruiting operation worked. Here's the connections you've got to make. Here are the people you need to have on your staff. Here are the people who are going to help you with your support staff. Much different and a much calmer situation than that. And the guy just wins everywhere he goes. He was won nearly 90% of his games throughout his career. So winning's winning. And we're seeing that more and more in college football, guys. You go from the small, small level, Lance Leopold at Kansas, Chris Klein at Kansas State, Kalen DeBoer at Washington. They win everywhere they go, and why won't that happen at Alabama? I happen to be a father of a daughter, too. It's easy for him to tell Alexis, listen, uh, Alabama's the most attended softball program attendance-wise in the country every year, and by the way, I can now give you a million dollars a year allowance. <laughs> well, and it's only <laughs> If we move one more time. <laughs> it's only 400 yards, I would uh, estimate, from the uh, football offices of Kalen DeBoer, the softball field. Do but you think I, that came? Do you think he asked that? How far away is the softball field from uh, Probably. I mean, based on what we've heard about Kalen DeBoer, you know, I think it will be an <laughs> no, interesting. You know what he says? Greg Burns said, doesn't matter. You've got a driver here. That's right. <laughs> you're you're going to have yeah. someone to drive you around. But, Brandon, I guarantee as a writer, this might be something you can go on and jump on right now. There is going to be a story that will back channel on Greg Byrne and Pat Murphy, the Alabama softball coach, having discussions with Caleb DeBoer and making sure that roster's got room for her because, you know, this is a great women's softball program. And if he was that in the conversation you had, hey, look, I want to be watching my daughter play softball, then you've got to assume that was part of the equation here. Oh, I'm sure. And the family as a whole. And she's a great softball player. Uh, extra inning softball ranked her as the number 11 player in, in the nation in this most recent signing class. Uh, and uh, no slouch. So I'm sure that they would want her. Uh, you know, the only reason why they didn't is because it's she's a West Coast kid and, and uh, had grown up in the West Coast in her formative years at Fresno State in Washington, and now uh, she, she's uh, ready to play ball. But, you know, I think that, you know, with, with Kalen, again, I, I was so caught up a couple of weeks ago in talking to people close in his life, his best friend, Uh, about just like how level-headed he is and how open he is. And I wonder, as far as just dealing with people, this guy like doesn't turn down anybody when they want to talk. When they beat Texas, I followed him around just hoping to get like a minute with him. And he went on ESPN and did his thing for 10 minutes live and all this. And at like 1.34 a.m., he came over to talk to me. And I very much appreciate that. Not a lot of head coaches do that, especially in big moments like that. And he was trying to figure out some logistics about that coming week before they face Michigan. He's talking to his assistants. And um, he still gave the time. I wonder how much that's going to change at Alabama. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that job changes people. And I'm not so, you know, Kalen DeBoer wants to be kind of a, not say a good old boy, but he's kind of like that. He's very nice. I, I, can, he, can he do that at Alabama? I'm not, I'm not so certain. Um, only our audience would do this, but Bubba Head has already done the uh, Google Maps search, 1,400 yards, football complex to softball field in Tuscaloosa. So there you go. Uh, on, on what you just said, and Brendan Marcello is with us 24-7 Sports as we continue our, our coverage uh, presented exclusively by Bud Light. Famously, when Mike Price, and I will hesitate now to say I'm not comparing Mike Price and Kalen DeBoer. But Mike Price, Brandon, when he took the job, there is a, well, you've been there, the Galleria. You know where it is, where SEC Media Days once was held. 
He drove over from Tuscaloosa, I think the first Christmas he was on the job. I'm trying to remember when he was actually hired, what date. Um, well, he coached in the Rose Bowl, right? So this might make... Oh, he did. Yeah. They, but he'd already been hired and yeah. then wanted to stay and coach through the Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah. But he drove over to the Galleria to do some Christmas shopping and was stunned, or some shopping, maybe it wasn't Christmas shopping, was stunned at how often he was recognized. Like, he thought he could go shopping at a mall in Alabama and nobody bother him. And, I mean, that was culture shock to him. It, it is a bit of a different world. Yeah, and Kalen's like a nondescript guy. Yeah. Like, he blends into the crowd very well. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see him dealing with all this. He'll, he'll never see as many cameras as he will at his introductory press conference. Again, when and if this get, deal gets finalized. Uh, you know, my report, I don't know what's out there since uh, we came on here, but my understanding from talking to people was that they were deep in negotiations, but when you get as deep as they were, it's going to be done. Washington was offering a little less than $9 million per year for him to stay there. Uh, they're really not willing to go well above that and really have a long extended deal. And um, it's going to be interesting to see where they go, but your listeners and watchers, uh, viewers don't care about that. But, you know, Washington tried, but that those talks, I'm told, did not last very long. Uh, I, I do want to ask you this, and it's not going to change the way people talk about this. Alabama is going to say Kalen DeWar was choice number one. Uh, Alabama's opponents and their fans are going to say no. I mean, look, uh, Lanning shot him down. Sark shot him down. Um, uh, Norvell shot him down. He was at least number four. doesn't matter. It depends on his record on the field. You know how this works with Jimmy Sexton, though. You know that you could have had a deal in place. Jimmy Sexton's going to slow play that while he leverages it for his guys. Isn't that the way this normally works? Yeah, sometimes. But also, um, you kind of present a pool of guys uh, – and to be quite honest with you, I, I'm not sure anybody can, at this moment, put their finger on who was the number one guy. Sure. Uh, it, 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 I think what you do is you present several uh, names, and then you start gauging through the agent, Jimmy Sexton, with those people, how interested they will be. And, of course, you're using that as a negotiating chip at their current schools and everything. Um you know, I know I uh, when I came on the show, what was that, two days ago? Yeah, Wednesday. Uh, with you guys, you know, I kept saying Mike Norvell, Mike Norvell, Mike Norvell, because I knew that he was one of those three names or four names and that he was someone that they were going to heavily look at and potentially, quote unquote, offer the job to. And uh, of course, today, this morning, but the timing with everything, you know, th there's no mistake. Uh, you know, it's always when people you see one to two people pulling themselves out of a race or saying, I'm staying here, that means that they're in talking to someone else at that very moment about taking the job. And it may just be one of those situations where they told Jimmy Sexton, Hey, these are the guys we're interested in. Three of them are your guys. What's the interest there on their part? And it became quickly apparent to them that DeBoer was the guy that would show the most interest. And of course, they started pursuing him a little bit more. But I, you know, my opinion, based off how this shook out, uh, after the Dan Lanning stuff, it looked like it was Norvell. And, um, but again, I, I don't know, any coach can go wrong the wrong way, but good gosh, this is an incredible group of coaches that they were considering. And I think any one of them at face value when they get hired, we're going to be just said to be great hires. And, th and this would certainly be one if this gets finalized here in the next few hours. I just want to, I want to, uh, to, to a big picture think here. And you said that Washington did not want to go much more than 8.4. I know they're not getting a full share of moving to the Big Ten, but they're moving to the Big Ten. It's ironic to me that 10 million a year is as high as Florida State went to keep. Uh, Norvell there and they're the mm -hmm. ones in the offseason that are saying the ACC is making us go broke but Washington who's go got future Big Ten money coming what would not go over 8.4 to keep DeVore meanwhile 10 million for the guys who are going broke in the ACC that's a an, an interesting twist for me yeah I I didn't say 8.4 just under nine yeah uh is someone else reporting 8.4? No, 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 it was double just, would have been 8.4. Yeah, yeah, some people were just talking about more than double, and then yeah. 4.2 gets you oh, to 8.4, okay. yeah. So yeah, I, I, I mean, was just using I was that told, number. 
I was told that it was just under nine. They did not want to go over nine when it came to the, the base salary and everything. Yeah, I just, um, I just found it interesting what, that Washington, I know they're not getting a full share, but they're going to be in the Big Ten. Eventually, they'll get real money. Yeah. And the ACC, and, and specifically Florida State, have been talking about, we're, we're, we're going to go broke if we don't get a better deal, and they're willing to go whew, as high as we needed to go. Well, listen, you know, Washington has money. They got money all around that program. Their NIL program is pretty good and everything. It's just that I'm not sure that they are quite capable of tapping into it as deeply as they probably should and or willing to do so because they're a little bit more conservative with the money there. Florida State is obviously willing to spend money they don't necessarily have right now <laughs> um, because they don't see a bright future in the ACC. So rather than just go die on the vine, we got to go spend money to make money. And, and with Norvell, it's not just more than $10 million a year with this new eight-year contract. It's putting more money in facilities and infrastructure there and also the operations uh, part of it with the football program. And those are things that have been discussed really for the last six-plus months with them. And, of course, that gets ramped up quite a bit here in the last week. Um, you know, And I, I think that Norvell was going to be very well taken care of no matter where he went. Um, it's just – I think Alabama and others would have saw a, an opening there to go get Norvell because, you know, the next two to three years there could be not not to say rocky, but a little bit more difficult. One, because the roster is going to be turning over a little bit, but also, I mean, the program, they're trying to get out of the ACC. And let's say they get out of the ACC in a year or two. Where are they going? There's There's going to be transitional years there. And Mike Norvell is going to be asked to transition them through that. And, um, you know, that's a very difficult ask for any elite coach. I mean, it's you. I, I think it's underrated a little bit about how much you have to change recruiting to properly prepare for the, the new eight to nine teams you're going to be playing every single year. All right, go follow Brandon on social media at bmarcello247 sports. Um, watch his videos. Give him the thumbs up like we ask you to do for us. Uh, he covers uh, college football as well as anyone and has always been a friend of our show. Thank you very much for the time, Brandon. We appreciate it. All right. See you guys. All right, buddy. Take care. Brandon Marcello joining us as we continue uh, our coverage here. Kalen DeBoer in Alabama very close, according to anyone that uh, covers college football on the national front, uh, to a finalized deal for him to be the next coach at Alabama. In the midst of that, just a quick piece of Auburn breaking news, Jarquez Hunter has announced that he will return to Auburn for another season. So that's, that's, one of the better running backs in the conference. Yeah, was there some concern he was, he was I didn't leaving? think so. But, yeah. I mean, I guess with Cornell out, yeah. you know, there's a relationship there. Then something could have gone down. But, you know, him committing again is yep. good. Yeah. Um, you must be happy, though, man. At Alabama fan, you got what is viewed as an elite coach, and you get to wash your balls later. Yeah, I, I do get to <laughs> gym locked in. Uh, lasted exactly as long as I thought it would last. Really? Was yeah. this about what you were predicting? I thought it would be this afternoon. What are you? Uh, what are you gonna have about twenty four hours, basically? Yeah, I hope. I mean, to, yeah. I, I mean, surely I'll be out here by left, five. You, you would have left about this time yesterday. So yeah, yeah, that's, it's gonna be like a twenty four hour deal. Yeah. So uh, Bud Light, we appreciate them so much. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Bringing you this extended coverage. Uh, not a signed contract yet, but everyone now expecting the I's to be dotted and the T's well, to be crossed and Kalen DeBoer to be the next coach in Tuscaloosa. And one of the telltale signs, Washington has called a team meeting for one thirty, so about an uh, hour and 10 minutes or so from now, one thirty Pacific time. Um, that's always the telltale sign when a coach is leaving, you get that randomly called team meeting. So that's being reported by Adam Rittenberg, among others. So, so where is DeBoer still in Seattle? That, that, that's a question I do not know the answer to right now. Um, our next guest might, in fact, know that answer. I have no earthly idea if Aaron Suttles has laid eyes on Kalen DeBoer today. But, uh, yeah, what you oh, got? Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Aaron with a big sip. Welcome to Bama and Bourbon. <laughs> Boys, after the last 46 hours, I needed this badly. <laughs> badly. Aaron Suttles. Lance and I are going to have to do an emergency Bama and Bourbon just so I can get some bourbon intake. Well, y'all right? talk for a sec. I'm going to go get me and uh, Dunaway one. You okay, want one? Yeah. I'll take one. Okay, sure, I'll, take I'll one. be right back. Yep. Yep. Um, yay Alabama to help the Alabama collective by the way yep. uh, yay Alabama there's the logo and we've got a slate at some point during the interview we'll bring it up but uh, you before we get into Kalen DeBoer you made a point uh, to say on Twitter before the the news started to break that some of you would not have survived 
2006 and 2007 because we've only been doing this just over 40 hours. Uh, remind everybody how long that search went back then. November 27th, 2006 to January 3rd, 2007. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible <laughs> to think. Now, there, and p- several people have pointed this out, some more politely than others, that it's different era in college football. It absolutely is. The, the transfer portal makes things vastly different. Social media makes the reaction vastly different. But I would argue and contend, look, you're making a, a potential 10-year decision. You cannot make this based on what one guy is going to go in the portal and do. And if you if you have to wait to get your guy, and I'm going to stress again, it didn't even take 48 hours. But and, and I also want to stress that because I'm with the Alabama, this is not officially done. This we're I'm commenting on public reports. So me speaking on this is not saying this is a done deal. Just wanted to get that disclaimer out of the way. If you have to wait on your guy and it costs you a play or two, then that's just the way that has to be because – a, a roster flips over every three to four years, and you're you're potentially making a ten year decision. So, um, a lot of people have been very vocal about you know Greg Byrne because of now social media, everyone gets to go online and, and express their opinion immediately, and all these coaches get to make videos pretending like they they turned Alabama down. Well, Alabama got a, a coach that was in the national championship game this year. Uh, and I do want to say real quick, to Aaron's point, Alabama has not announced this, but it is being reported uh, by most of the trusted voices, including Pete Thamel, who has added to his report now that Kalen DeBoer has informed Washington officials that he is taking the Alabama job and will tell his team in roughly an hour at that team meeting. That's from Pete Thamel of ESPN, Pete's a trusted voice in college football. That's according to his sources there. Uh, so just to clear that up, what Aaron is saying, Alabama has not announced this. And Aaron... Um, I would expect, out of courtesy to Kalen DeBoer, who apparently still is, if he's telling his team in Seattle, Alabama probably holds that announcement until after he has told his team. That would probably be the way they would handle that, wouldn't you think? I think you think about everything that Alabama does. They do things in a first-class way, and I, I think that's right on right on the nose, Ryan. Um, so uh, for Greg Byrne, uh, I, I think, you know, the hiring of Nate Oates, he's won the SEC regular season and tournament twice now. He's been the overall number one seed. Um, he'll need to, at some point, advance deeper in the NCAA tournament. I think Nate Oates would tell you that. That's not just me saying that. Uh, but you're always going to be judged on, on, your, on your, your football head coach. So this was an important – everybody always said, who's going to be the guy that has to hire Nick Saban's replacement? This is Greg Byrne that has done it. Um, interesting hire for him and, and for his future at Alabama. Yeah, you remember, you know, Greg Burns earned the nickname the Ninja yeah. with the Nate Oates hire um, because everyone sort of had it. I'm not going to say it was smoke and mirrors, but you know, people were talking Thad Mata when he hired Nate Oates, and it was a complete shock to everyone. I don't think anyone was shocked by this because I, I think his uh, Caleb DeBoer's name, uh, Caleb DeBoer's name was on uh, everyone's list. But it's a guy that's look it. He's not a cultural fit, right? He's never coached outside. He's never coached in the Deep South. And and I think we all recognize that there are some things that are are challenging in that. This was the first year, guys. I saw an interesting uh, thing on social media last night. Someone drew a, a circle around like the last, I, I don't know, 15 oh, I national champions. I saw this. And it, it was all like from New Orleans. Yeah. Tallahassee up to Clemson. And that was it. That's where that circle was. Yep. So that's 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 sort of what I mean when I say you're gonna have to have some ties. But I think Alabama's got some built-in advantages there. They got it's gonna come become incumbent. They're gonna really want to keep Traveris Robinson on staff, in my opinion. I don't again, I want to be very clear. I don't know anything. I'm not speaking for Coach DeBoer for Greg Byrne, but I, I would think it would be very incumbent upon them to try to keep T Rob in the fold. I think you want to keep a guy like Freddie Roach that's in staff to sort of help you make those in-state connections. Um, and, and so I, I wouldn't be surprised there if those were two guys that you, you might see stay on the staff. Again, I don't want to make any speculation that I'm reporting this because that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying that will help bridge those ties. Guys that have played in this state, Traveris Robinson at Auburn and now coached at Alabama, and Freddie Roach, obviously what he did as a, a player in Alabama and now a coach at Alabama. So I think – but overall X's and O's, I mean – I'll leave it up to Lance, who's more of an X's and O's guy than me. It's pretty exciting hire. Uh, I, I think it is a tremendous hire. 
Uh, I'll tell you, if he ends up going eight and four for a couple of years and gets fired, I'll never live it down. You will not. Um, but I feel like it is a fantastic hire. And look, I had the important job of going and pouring us a chicken cock ride. There we go. So I don't know what I missed. Did anybody? I heard when I walked in, you were talking assistants. Uh, Tommy Reese, though, this was a guy Adam Rittenberg um, at least reported was in the mix if Kalen DeBoer and Mike Norvell fell through. Tommy Reese really did a good job of getting better each and every week, getting acclimated to his personnel, to learning kind of on the job. And that offense, we saw it. We saw it develop in October, November, December. He, If he's not retained, which if Ryan Grubb comes along, he's probably not going to be. But I would think he is a highly coveted guy out there. I think he, um, I think he earned himself a lot of money this season. Based on what you said, the just sort of the progression of the Alabama offense, the growth that we saw from from Jalen Hurts, and um, I, I know. Listen, if you're going to be a coordinator, part of the gig is you're going to have to be open to criticism, and there was plenty of criticism early in the season, and I know there's been plenty of criticism of the last play call against Mission in the semifinals, but uh, along the way, there was a lot of growth, and, and I don't think anyone can can sort of debate that. I think what we saw in the Michigan game was the offensive line play took a step back. And then what do you know? So did the play calling, right? I mean, there's certain things that you have to have and be able to rely on from an offensive line standpoint to allow you to call things. But um, I don't know what the future holds for Tommy. I know he's very well liked in that, but I've gotten to know him in my position. Um, I, I think the players relate well to him. He's a young guy. I think he's got a bright future, whether he's at Alabama or wherever he ends up. ESPN's Chris Lowe now reporting this is done. Uh, Kalen DeBoer has agreed to a deal to replace Nick Saban as Alabama head football coach, sources tell ESPN. Uh, so that is from Chris Lowe, who is very, very well tied in uh, to things such as this. So a uh, very respected voice in this matter saying uh, that it is, in fact, now done. Can I, can I give you a uh, glass half empty that, that turns into a glass half full in this situation? Usually you look at a record and you say a coach when he's lost 25% or that 25% of his losses have come in, in playoff situations, you think, oh, my goodness. But he's only lost 12 times ever, so hit three of his 12 losses have been either in the championship or a semifinal game. Uh, that's pretty crazy. This, this yeah. guy doesn't do anything but win at any level. You've been around sports, not just football, sports, a long time. Do you believe – winners just win there's a there's a dna on people who can win at a certain level and they just they just win yeah because it, it comes down to one thing we always want to make it more complicated than it is and we had 17 years with nick saban if we haven't learned this then we really haven't learned anything it's culture it's the culture you build you can have an all like a a, a season here and there where you could do some special things but a culture wins um it's why the patriots thrive it's why people are writing um, these soliloquies to Bill Belichick. It's the culture. It's the process with Nick Saban. And when you see a guy that does this at every stop, you look, you can get lucky here and there with a generational player. And, and I don't want to take any shots at Coach Orgeron because that 2019 LSU team, team was special. But you get generational players. You get Jamar, uh, Jamar Chase. You get uh, Justin Jefferson. You get um, Joe Burrow. Uh, generational type players that come together. You can do special things. But to do it year in and year out, it has to be about the culture because your roster turns over so frequently in collegiate sports. So, yeah, when you see a guy do it at multiple levels, multiple stops, you're like, okay, I mean, did he, is, is it just circumstance? Is he getting lucky year after year after year? Or is it, there's something about the way he goes about his business, his culture. That, that makes that so, and I think it's all culture-based. Aaron, you referenced the final play call from Tommy Reese in the Rose Bowl. Can you imagine, though, if they would have scored there, gone on and beaten Michigan, and then they beat Washington, do you still think this goes down? Like, Nick Saban obviously would have retired, goes out oh. a national champion, but the guy that he beat for the national championship is his successor. <laughs> I mean, I guess it still would have happened, right? What a story that would have been. Yeah, I, I tend to think so. Uh, listen, I think I think I don't. I don't know. I saw a social media post earlier. I, I and it may have come from Pete Thamel or or Dan Wolk, and I can't remember. But K, Kalen DeBoer, I guess who he hired this year is his agent. Oh, Jimmy Sexton. Yeah, that that should have been and everyone's been telltale a, sign, right? There has been an extension yeah. in the works at Washington for a while. So I'm not saying I'm not going to all conspiracy theory, all, all Pelican brief here on you, <laughs> but um, it, it leads to think that 
Jimmy Sexton knew what was coming in some regard, whether that whether it was the Michigan job maybe opening up with Jim Harbaugh going back to the NFL that's been rumored to happen here in the next coming weeks or so, or if he knew that maybe Coach Saban was contemplating this decision. But he knew some big jobs would be available. He had confidence in his guy to say, you know, let, let's roll the dice and leave that extension be for right now because there, we might have some leverage to apply when this is all said and done. Um, so I want to, Aaron Suttles is with us for a few more moments. Yay Alabama at yay dash Alabama, or excuse me, at yay underscore Alabama on Twitter, yay dash Alabama.com on uh, the web. If you would like to make a donation there, uh, to help Alabama's collective, Aaron also coast Bama and bourbon with Lance and Scott is showing you how you could subscribe there. If you'd like to at yay Alabama. So, you know, obviously you see names enter the transfer portal and people immediately panic. Isaiah Bond reportedly has done so, Aaron. Uh, I, I always feel like it's important, and we've seen this already this cycle, to remind everyone just because you enter the portal does not mean you're going to transfer. And that's one thing uh, Kalen Boer would have to do uh, coming to Tuscaloosa is, is, in a lot of senses, re-recruit some of this roster before he ever starts even recruiting the future rosters. Yeah, and, and if you're – let's let's take that exact position that you're talking about with Isaiah Bond. If you're a wide receiver, aren't you excited about the rumored and public reports of the the new head coach coming to Alabama? The, those are pretty are good receivers he had this year, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that being said, I think we're all sort of hip to the fact that this is um, – this is sort of financially motivated for the for a lot of these guys, and I understand if I was if I had those talents at that age, I would be looking at, out for myself and my family. But I do think just because you're in the portal doesn't mean you don't come out of the portal. And um, if I'm an offensive skill player at Alabama, I'm more excited today than I was last year when I didn't know who my quarterback was going to be, and and there were so many questions about what this offensive line was going to be and, and all that. So um, yeah, I, I think. You know, Isaiah's going to have a decision to make. Um, you know, we uh, at Yay Alabama. Well, I want to say this, too, about the the, the public um, reported new coach at Alabama. If, if that's who it ends up being, he's on the record. He's very he's very supportive of NIL. Oh, yeah? Nick Saban was sort of realized this is where it's going. I don't love it, but this is what it is. The rumored next coach at Alabama, if that's him, he's very supportive of NIL. And he's going to take a much different approach uh, much uh, more public facing than what we've seen. I think, and that's that's guys. That's one of the more fascinating things. If it ends up being the rumored coach, a lot of things are going to be different. We've been we've seventeen years. We've dealt with no freshmen speaking, right? No assistant coaches speaking. That's just that just became the way things were. Now it, it may end up being the same, but it might de- end up being different. So there's a lot of change coming to Alabama. Yeah, we had just so for your knowledge, we had Brock Hewitt on earlier, and he said this guy. And, and you could text him any time of day. And in 10 minutes, he's already texted you back. Um, and then Brandon Marcello, who was on right before you, said, I'm waiting after the semifinal win. They're still sort of running through their plans, what they're going to do to go play Michigan for the national championship. He does all his ESPN obligations and all that. And he still makes time to come by, not to sit down and just answer one question. He sat with me for 10 minutes at 1.30 in the morning to do that so this guy seems to be a players coach media friendly good for an nil brand absolutely and that's what i'm hoping for for alabama because our whole goal is and i and i always say this because i know there's some um there's some reticence about nil with alabama fans but you need it now more than ever i think you're going to see that we alabama fans were so accustomed to relying on nick saban i don't have to worry about recruiting nick saban's got it and that was absolutely true if i if i were to give the rumored publicly reported uh, new coach at Alabama, any advice it would be <laughs> to take from Nick Saban, it would be you got to learn to say no. Because Alabama, the, the head job at Alabama is not the head job at Washington. All due respect to Washington. You're going right. to be pulled from a million different directions. Hey, come play in my come play in my golf tournament. Come speak to my church. Come speak to the boys and girls. You have to learn to say no. And it's not, it's not coming from a place of being a jerk, but you have to make the main thing the main thing. And – that that's just a different reality being a coach in the deep south, especially at a at a place like Alabama, where you're day one, the most famous person in that state, the most recognized person in that state. It's different than in in the Pacific Northwest. No offense to the great states of Washington and Oregon. <laughs> Has your uh, duties changed over the last couple of days as far as 
once we had this coaching change, players got 30 days, now 28 days to make a move in the portal. Do you guys have to go back to work with players yep. that are getting better offers? You guys have got to figure out dollar-wise what makes sense to match. I know it's a pain in the ass, but it's part of it, right? It's part of it. And, you know, I, I'm always quick to say we have great people on our staff that deal with that side of it. I, I deal with my – I stay in my lane. But at the same time, I, I'm in these meetings, and I, I know what we're charged with doing. All we care about, end of the day, is making Alabama athletics as good as it can be. And, and there is no hidden agenda. And – um, yes, I want to provide for my family, but at, I wake up every morning. I go to sleep every night. I want to make Alabama athletics the best they can be. I want to give them every resource available and not just football, but we got to take care of football first. And that's reality. And that's always going to be reality. And so, yeah, there are some realities that, that now with Nick Saban gone, that we're going to have to do things a little differently from, from that approach. And we're working on that right now. we got some exciting plans coming and, and we hope that the fan base gets on board with this because I think what's really cool on this is, and, I, and again, I, I, people that don't like it, don't like it. But if you supported Yay Alabama this year, you directly supported a regular season SEC championship for men's basketball, an SEC tournament championship for men's basketball. You supported a men's uh, or the, uh, the SEC championship football team. You had a direct hand in that. And, and I think there's some pride that you can take away from some joy you can take away from that. No matter your contribution level, you literally, literally had a hand in it. All right. So he is Aaron Suttles. He mentions having a hand in it. If uh, you are so inclined, yay-alabama.com to subscribe and get some uh, good content and uh, help the NIL push there at Alabama, yay-alabama.com. Aaron, thank you very much for jumping on. We appreciate the insight. Anytime, boys. Take care. All right, buddy. Take care. You too. Aaron Suttles with us. Uh, this is uh, kind of a, a reset here. All the major national voices, including Chris Lowe, who's as tied in on coaching searches as anyone, uh, is saying this is now a done deal that it has been agreed to. I would think, as I mentioned to Aaron, Alabama, my guess would be, probably waits to announce this a little more than an hour from now to give Kalen DeBoer a chance to speak with his team, whether face-to-face -face or on Zoom. I do not know how that's taking place. But there are reports of a team meeting about an hour from now there in Seattle. I would think as a courtesy to your new guy, you allow him to address his team before you ever make it official. Oh, yeah. I mean, one thing for sure, Greg Burns has been around college athletics for a long, long time. And um, he's he has told his people, we don't officially announce this until he he gets a chance to, to notify the family, so to speak. Uh, I, I sent this out and – this is mean of me to send this out. Well, why would you do that? Um, but that, well, because I'm drinking bourbon, I'm delirious on lack of sleep. But <laughs> you uh, smell. I do. I haven't had a shower. But somebody said, just tweeted, "Poor Will Rogers," and I retweeted. I said, "Will Rogers loses to Alabama again <laughs> because he, yeah. he's gone to he was going to Seattle to play for Kalen yeah. DeBoer." That's true. LM, the job is offered to two people. Sark, listen, out of respect, and then KD. I don't think so. Yeah, the, the, I, I think Dan Lanning, I think there's a good chance, but I would be a little surprised. There is no way Mike Norvell turned this job down. I don't think so either. Uh -huh. Not with the situation Florida State is in, well, um, with the future of their athletics and their conference. So when you listen to what Mar the way Marcella describes it, is oftentimes a guy like Jimmy Sexton will go with a panel of – his clients like would you be could i could i interest you in this shelf right could i interest you in it, it's like when you go to buy the engagement ring yep you know could i interest you in this set of rings and jimmy knowing that there's a chance that greg Byrne is going to like one of those three or four and i am going to be able to um to get my other two or three paid that he might not want right the only way you can do that is to keep leverage alive and if Greg Burns says, oh, you got Kalen DeBoer. That's who I wondered right away. Let's do the deal now. That doesn't help Jimmy Sexton. That doesn't help Mike Norvell. That doesn't help Steve Sarkeesian. That doesn't help Dan Lanning. I, I don't know. I don't know who the job was ever offered to. Greg Burns only going to tell you it was offered to, to Kalen DeBoer. That's what Greg Burns yeah, and I, I, you know, I don't think we'll ever be able to top the story of Mal Moore basically camping out in the Saban's driveway in, in South Florida. But I think there's going to be some really cool elements to this. To, to be able to... And people will say it's all money-based. I really don't believe it is. When you're a guy that was making sandwiches a few years ago and never really thought you would be in this situation to coach one of the greatest programs in the history of college football, 
I think it was more than money, but I think there's going to be some really cool behind the scenes stories back to his daughter and the softball angle. I think there's going to be something there. And, and I think the more you find out, um, well, I, I think it's going to be a cool story. I truly do not believe you had to call Pat Murphy and say, do you have room? <laughs> no. Uh, as I did a little research on the fly here, she was the number 11 prospect all position. She wasn't like the number 11 what left fielder. What does she play? Uh, I don't know the position, yeah. but she was the number 11 overall uh, prospect. She had her choices. So there's a chance schools. Murphy recruited her anyway. Oh, well, I'm sure would, he did. Would have yeah. been in yeah. on the mix, and so too would have UCLA and probably Oklahoma, and she probably chose Washington because it was the family. That's where they were. So this, this was a windfall for him, right? Oh He's just on gosh. the couch. Yeah, oh, my gosh. It's like uh, – I'm trying to think of a, a you know, you recruit. Uh, if LeBron James had had an uh, had a, a twin who was great at defensive end, the basketball coach would have been sitting here going, "Wait, I get little LeBron too." I mean, this is this is great for Alabama softball if she does choose to follow the family to Tuscaloosa. Yeah, you never know. She may be like, oh, I've been under my parents' yes. wings all this time, and now I got a little bit of freedom to me. And yeah. third base uh, and shortstop says Jeff Cook. Hey. Right there, slap hitter. I got a little freedom, and my dad. Look at these Alabama fans; man. they're yeah. all dialed in. I got a little freedom to me. My dad's got access to a private jet; he can be here anytime, or I can be home anytime. Yeah, right? much like I said this when I, when Auburn hired Hugh, Hugh Freeze. Celebrate if you're an Auburn fan because the guy knows how to coach, and he is going to be much different from the coach you had before. Now, the difference is uh, yeah, I, this coach this. is going to be much different Troy too. Hits it. uh, it's flown by. There it is, uh, middle of the screen. Oh, wow. The first first SEC home game is Georgia. Oh, I was about to. Let's get to the schedule. I wanted to do that, Scott. (laughs) Anyway, I was just going to say, I think Alabama fans, you'll only be able to see the results once it happens. But if I was an Alabama fan tonight, I would be celebrating this hire. I think this is. So Scott has the schedule. You do the schedule. I'm going to run to the restroom. Okay, you got it, buddy. Continuous coverage nonstop brought to you by Bud Light. A lot of Bud Lights overnight, and I'm heading to the restroom here. What about the schedule? it's 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 a pretty. Favorable start for him, Lance, for a guy that is feeling his way into coaching in the Southeastern Conference. I get to start, if I'm Kalen DeBoer, with Western Kentucky. I get to start with USF at home. My first road trip, it's a Big Ten road trip, but it's at Wisconsin. I mean, you would say Alabama is close to a double-digit favorite Yeah, I think they will be a double-digit favorite that game. And I I think in year two, Luke Fickle is going to have Wisconsin um, improved. Um, you know, Tyler Van Dyke is, if you get good, Tyler Van Dyke's going to be an upgrade. Um, but that's a game that, look, if DeBoer was to lose one of those three games, um, I might get death threats. But, yeah, they're 3-0. and Yeah, so they're likely 3-0. and Then you get a bye week, if you're Kalen DeBoer, before Georgia comes to town. And that is a national prime time. It's already been announced. 630 ABC kick for that one. I mean, it's... It's as prime time as it gets. That'll be one of the highest rated football games of the season. It's a rematch of the SEC championship game. A team that went to the college playoff playing a team that was going to be the number one seed in the playoff had they not lost to Alabama. Yeah, look, and the two teams that played for the national championship Monday night, neither one of those teams could be the number one team at that point. It's going to be Georgia. Georgia will be the number one team. There's a good chance it could be one versus two. And this is going to be a pressure moment for Kalen DeBoer. And I think this will be the first time Alabama fans and the rest of the SEC will get a on-the-pulse kind of feel for Kalen DeBoer in these big games. But watching him, I know it's a different animal, but in these big games in the Pac-12, he won all of them. At Vanderbilt, South Carolina at home, um, there is, if he's not 5-1, and one, something probably has gone terribly awry. Here. Yeah. If he's... Uh, six and zero, oh, you're feeling great because you've also beaten Georgia, and you're the number one team in the nation. Yeah, you're probably number one in the nation. You're right, and then you get your first taste of a you know of a SEC rivalry game going to Tennessee. Uh, who knows what Tennessee is going to be? I, I thought Nico and his first start looked pretty good, and you know he'll have some time to develop. I think it. Tennessee will be somewhat between what they were this year and last year. Right. And last year, at times, they played like one of the top two or three teams in all of college football, and this year they played like a team on the outside of the top twenty-five. So I think Tennessee that's going to be a really tough road trip. Uh, Missouri comes to town. Interesting game, and it's not necessarily a trap game because you have a bye week before that in the LSU trip. Uh, but at Tennessee, Missouri is an interesting two-game stretch of college football right there. If Missouri 
is what people think they will be, which is probably a playoff contender. Next yeah, year. and I, I think better you get them in Tuscaloosa than Columbia. Sure. Columbia is one of those strange it's a weird places. Place to play. Yep. Yeah, that we saw Georgia almost get beat a couple of years ago, and Missouri is much improved. They don't have the talent of Alabama, though. That's a game that Alabama will be double digit favorites in again. By week, and then you're at LSU. Um, everybody talks about how difficult Alton Stadium is to play in the Pac 12. The only stadium that gets compared to it is Washington. That's your home stadium, so you've never had to endure that. Uh, I don't know that he's seen anything like Tiger Stadium, especially if that's a primetime game. No, I I think this is really the most hostile environment he might have been in was maybe the Sugar Bowl with the Texas fans. Even more so than Oregon, you think? I mean, Oregon, boy, people swear about that place. Yeah, probably Oregon, but then after that, it was probably a neutral site. Uh, So he hasn't, you know, he hasn't coached necessarily in these environments, but again, he's going to have more elite talent to coach. Mercer, uh, between that and a trip to Oklahoma, another interesting game, and then, excuse me, uh, people make a big deal about Oregon, Washington, what a big rivalry that is, how hated that is. I don't think you've ever experienced, if you're Kalen DeBoer, anything like the Iron Bowl, and that's what he'll experience to wrap up his regular season. Yeah, you look, do get it at home, though. That's huge. Again, I'm guessing the regular season number is going to be 10-2. and two. I think they get back to a college football playoff. A lot of this is going to be dependent upon how much of that roster stays intact, what he's able to do with the transfer portal. Um, but on the surface, I'm not going to doubt the guy. I mean, in year two, he went undefeated um, in what was, and you'll give me this, right? The best competitive year we've seen in the Pac-12. Best Pac-12 year in maybe my lifetime? Yeah. I think it, it, it was. And for yeah. this guy to go undefeated in year two in that conference, quite the accomplishment. Yeah, and played for a national championship. And, and another point I wanted to bring up, and sure. I saw somebody saying uh, basically – the balls on this guy, you know, being able to have, you know, not the courage. I forgot exactly how it was worded in the in the chat room over there. But I agree. I said it's going to take a special constitution for a guy to take this. And some of these ego guys like a Dan Lanning or um, a Lane Kiffin, I could have seen them take it just because that's how they're wired. This shows you, though, that Kalen DeBoer doesn't think this job is too big and ultra confident to be able to follow in the footsteps of a guy like Nick Saban. I think that says something right there. Well, I, I, to your point, are you going to be successful being the coach behind Nick Saban? Ever you could you could kill it? Are you going to be viewed as successful because you're following Nick Saban? I don't know, but I'll tell you the type of coach I want is I want a guy that doesn't pay attention to that storyline. I want a guy that is not the guy that says, "Ooh, I don't want to be the guy. I want to be the guy after the guy." Right? And I want a coach that is saying. Oh, no, I've got the head coaching job at Alabama, or I've got the head coaching job following Tom Osborne at Nebraska or Bobby Bowden at Florida State. That's the job I want. Yeah, and look, and I haven't seen this pop up yet. I guarantee you the comparison is going to come up, and maybe after he loses a game, this is Les Miles following Nick Saban at LSU. Um, Les Miles, the results weren't bad. He won, what, did he win two national championships? or just uh, He won one. He won the one. He won one, played for another, though, lost to yeah, Alabama. I, yeah. I feel great that this guy will win one. It's going to be more difficult once you get to a 12-team playoff. But this will not be a less mile situation. I just don't see that at all. I don't think it's going to be a Nick Saban situation because we're never going to see that again. Um, but I do believe year in, year out, this team will be in the college football playoff. Immediately. And they will win a championship. Immediate for Les Miles was 11-2, 11-2, 12-2, 2 then an 8-9 and win year, then 11 wins, then the national championship 13, uh, and then it fell off after that. Well, yeah. but, I mean, uh, all of those that you just mentioned, 11-2, and 11-2, and 12-2, and 11-2, and 13-1 are college football playoff teams now. Yeah, You know, they weren't then. You had to be a top two team then, not even a top four team. Real quick, we were asking the uh, chat. A lot of people are just jumping on on YouTube. We appreciate that. We ask us, uh, we ask you to give us a thumbs up. We appreciate you doing that. If you have not subscribed already, we would count it a privilege for you to subscribe and also set your alerts so you know when we're alive for events like this. We were asking, is it official yet or is this just speculation? It has not been made official by Alabama at this point, but we'll bring you up to speed uh, probably about an hour and a half ago. Reports uh, started to come out that Kalen DeBoer and Alabama were finalizing a deal to become Alabama's next head coach. Chris Lowe, who is very, very well sourced and trusted when it comes to coaching searches, uh, has since reported that the deal is done. They've agreed to a deal. Many people are reporting that there is a 1.30 Pacific time, so in about 45 minutes, a team meeting uh, where Kalen DeBoer will address his team and tell him he is taking the Alabama job. 
So our speculation would be that's why Alabama has not made this official yet as a courtesy uh, to Kalen DeBoer. They can't control leaks. But as a courtesy to Kalen DeBoer, you would never make it official, one would think, until he's able to address his team just so you could say, I was able to tell you first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is never going to be out of the media. When they say his players found out in the media, there is absolutely this day and age no way you can avoid that. Yeah. But Alabama's only obligation would be, we'll let you tell your team first before we ever make it official. Yeah. Chances are good. Um, those leaks come from the agent or two from the, uh, the, the side that has been told that, hey, uh, the athletic director, I'm leaving. I'm going somewhere else. Well, instantly, what does he have to do? Well, dang, we've got to find a new coach. And you heard, like, I really believe Ryan Grubb, and, and obviously Brock knows he does mornings there, so he's got a uh, finger on the pulse, but he said it's going to be a guy with head coaching experience. And I think that's, as much as I like Tommy Reese, I think the way they work hand-in-hand, hand, Kayla DeBoer and Ryan Grubb, I think that is another home run for Alabama fans to be able to get Grubb if, in fact, that does happen. Yeah. Uh, listen, we understand ESPN is reporting it's official. That's what you know. That's when we started going on the air was that it was happening and that the contract has been signed. What Brown is saying is that it has not officially come in a newsletter from the University of Alabama. Greg Byrne hasn't sent out a quote yet saying that hey, Kalen DeBoer was our da 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 da. Uh, that is something they'll wait until he walks in and tells the players. Right. Uh, Tony Sakakis, who uh, covers Alabama athletics. Uh, I don't know if he did this in advance or has since called Nate Oates, but he probably did this in advance about a couple of guys. Uh, he asked Nate Oates to provide some advice to Kalen DeBoer, a guy who had never been to the South, about coaching in the South. And Nate said, quote, you just have to be genuine. Shoot. But it sure helps <laughs> if you win, too. <laughs> so it's just like that's Nate. another thing you think Nate had ever stepped foot around here no and he's recruited just fine and were they not and, the best team in college basketball for a minute last well, year they were the overall number one seed yeah. so yeah for that minute they were um but yes I mean Nate Oates has done just fine and I think you don't have to look any further than that look I, I Jim and and to your point there Jim you've seen or to Nate's point and Tony's point you've seen schools probably hire the good old boy southern coach just because he's a good old boy southern coach and that has failed too we act as if when we talk about he's got to figure out a way to recruit in the South, we act as if just because you're in the South, you can flat rec- you, you, you can win just because you could recruit in the South, and that's not the case either. Uh, our own Emily Grace McWhorter has been um, stationed in Tuscaloosa for us for the last couple of days, and she is out and about. I think you're on the Strip. Is that right, E.G.? Is that where we find you? I am on the Strip, but it's a little bit light out here. I'm assuming because classes are going on, but I'm trying to get some reactions from students about how they feel about the new hire of Kalen DeBoer. It's yeah. Friday at 3 o'clock. I can't I, – I don't remember having a Friday class when I was down there. Um, I would check inside of Galette's because you're right there. Okay. This one – this is – this this place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am. You, you had it scouted out. Yeah. That place? The place that's okay. empty right well, now? Well, it's yeah. dead right now, yeah, so I will, I will pull back. That used to be a good I, Friday afternoon spot. I went by our friends at Innisfree. Uh, no one hanging there. Five bar. So it seems to me that I guess everyone's maybe preparing for tonight, getting yeah. a nap in, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. So you're not reporting the Alabama dynasty is over, though, right? I mean, <laughs> the fact that nobody's left on the streets. Uh, I, I'm interested on your take, though, um, uh, just that you've been there this long. Uh, along the way of all your conversations on the record, off the record with people, the fans and the students uh, and other media people, did anyone ever say Kalen DeBoer to you? Like when you were out at the Bryant, by the way, other people were taking our video and counting the type of stuff that was there by the uh, Saban statue right. and listing that on the internet, which was amazing. Um, did anybody ever say I want Kalen DeBoer. You were getting a lot of Lane Kiffins. It was Lane Kiffin or nothing. Um, I feel like from some of our friends in the media, Kalen was the natural choice, I would say, and the biggest home run. But from Alabama fans and students, he was not mentioned one time. And quite frankly, I'm not even sure if they know who he is. Yeah. Oh, I don't doubt. I mean, some of them may have learned who he was Monday night if they tune in to watch right. the championship game. But yeah, this is going to be a guy that I think a lot of students, when they finally spill out into the strip there, EG, are going to, when you say, what is your opinion of Kalen DeBoer? They're probably going to say who? 
You know, tell me who exactly. that is. Yeah. If, if you're looking for a tie and stay with us, EG, we're going to get more emotions. Uh, but Travis Ryer made a good point earlier uh, that, and you may have got talked about this and while I was running to the bathroom, but we did not, I apologize. No. Kalen DeBoer's director of scouting at Washington is Jarrett McElwain. If that sounds familiar, that is the former uh, UA student assistant and son of former UA offensive coordinator Jim McElwain. Well, there uh, you go. Who Nick Saban reached out to very early in his process in Tuscaloosa <laughs> to become the offensive coordinator there in T Town. And he was the one that led Alabama to the first national championship with Greg McElroy, right? That was Jim McElwain that was the OC for that, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, I think you're right about yeah, that. Yeah, I think I'm right about that. So there is there is a connection, though a little loosely, to Alabama, a former UA student assistant and son of Jim McElwain. Um, I, I do think it would be more celebratory downtown with the students right now if Lane Kiffin would have been the guy. I, I'm but really, I, I think this is a major ego check for Lane Kiffin because he probably believed he was getting this job. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't think Lane ever thought he was in the mix for this job. You don't? I don't. I think that's why he was – that's why he was on the on the troll on the on the troll. Yeah, maybe you uh, you've spent most of your day. Uh, well, you spent most of your night last night at the airport. Uh, fun but fruitless. Yes. Fun but fruitless for you. Uh, you've spent a lot of your day today outside the Malmore Athletic Complex. And for those that wonder about Nick Saban, you saw you saw him leaving earlier. He was at work again today. Again, I don't think that Alabama football retirement is a very loose term for these guys, but. It was me and uh, our friend Ryan Hennessy, and it was just us. And we saw, um, excuse me, in the way of some people trying to get into the restaurant. Uh, and we saw Cedric come down the staircase, and we both kind of looked at each other. We said, "Okay, this is it." And the two, the two uh, state troopers came out, and so we were able to watch Coach Saban leave. And I said, "Well, maybe Cedric has to come back, so maybe we'll see him again." Uh, but I had it on and. Try to see if I get some reactions while everything was heating up. But pretty dead around the Malmore complex. Not, not a whole lot of action there today, huh? None. None besides us seeing Coach Saban leave and those state troopers go in. Yeah. Now, let me tell you a story, though. This is hilarious. So we had um, a false alarm, and I see an individual start running towards kind of the side of Malmore. And so naturally, I, too, start running because if there's a breaking story, there's a breaking story. And so I turned the corner and there were state troopers and we thought it could be, they were trying to backdoor in Coach DeBoer. Uh, it was Jeff Allen and he was very apologetic that we gave him a false alarm uh, <laughs> that he was the coach and he was laughing and the state troopers, they were in such good spirits. It was hilarious. So, uh, okay. So- uh, there could have been a video of me sprinting that 40 yards to try and see it was only to be Jeff Allen. Yeah. yeah, I sent out the video, uh, Nick Saban leaving right before 1 o'clock that Emily Grace shot, and uh, it's on our social media platform. Uh, and then and here's the video. This is uh, what we're talking about. Nick Saban uh, coming out and leaving work again, day two of his retirement, and back at work again. Uh, looks like taking a little bit of a habsy today, the little halves day. Yeah. And Nick, yes. Saban, Nick Saban comes walking out and, um, and leaves and – Shortly after, within a half hour of him leaving the football complex, the Kalen DeBoer story broke nationally, and it's almost like Nick Saban was at work until it was all done, until yeah. Kalen DeBoer was uh, in in the nest, so to speak. Yeah. All right, EG, did you track somebody down that will finally tell I, to you? He actually got tracked down by this. What's your name? My name's Tyson Ely. Uh, Tyson Ely. How about that? Oh, you know Tyson? Hey, man. How are you doing, Tyson? Yeah. Uh, doing good. Oh. Good. Are you excited about Kalen DeBoer uh, being hired as the new Alabama football coach? I'll be honest. I was um, I was a little uneasy at first, unsure, but the, I've been watching y'all, and the more y'all talk about him, the more I'm getting more excited about. So uh, I just made a good edit of him coming in. So I think he should bring some offensive you know, coaches with him. Maybe Grubbs can come. Tommy Reese can stay on staff, but uh, I'd love to see him. Some fans are joking. Uh, does he have a good center that he can bring with him? Wow. <laughs> were you uh, were you a lane? Uh, who was your guy? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Who was your guy, if not Kalen DeBoer? Uh, Dan Lanning. Okay. And that, that was very short-lived. But <laughs> the news we were getting, I mean, we were tracking private jets. We were tracking, you know, flights from Oregon to Tuscaloosa. Thought it was happening. 
completely shut down. So that was kind of sad at first, but I'm happy where we are. Okay. All right. So you're okay with uh, Kalen DeBoer then? I'm completely okay with him. And uh, I'm excited to see what he can bring bring to the table. He's got a he's got a tough schedule ahead. My birthday falls on the Georgia game. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. That'll yeah. either be a hell of a day for you or a bad one. Yeah. One of nothing, the two, probably. Nothing, nothing sucks in losing on your birthday. Nothing in between. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, shout out to the Khan family. Uh, Britton Khan, one of my good friends, Alex Khan. Also a good friend. I know uh, one of y'all is related to him. So just wanted to throw that out there. Yep. Right. Next round, see y'all. All right, thank let, you, let, Tyson. Let everybody know where the party is over there because it's not where EG is right now. <laughs> Follow Tyson, EG. Follow him. I'm like, where are you going? I got to be there. Yeah. yeah. We have another person honk and say – Next round. So okay. That's well, there you go. We're the official show of Alabama students, so it's good to hear <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, we're the official show of three o'clock on the strip on a Friday. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's our, not bad. That's right in our wheelhouse. Right right there. Worse. <laughs> yeah. Get an early drink, an early meal, an early home for us. That's it, right there. <laughs> uh, Eg, thank you. Uh, terrific job. I I assume that there's no flight coming in tonight. Or, or you, oh, she'll be tracking. Are you staying there? Or are you coming home? What's happening? I- I don't know. I'll uh, be in touch. We'll see. I'm still convinced that whoever I was with last night is somehow connected to this, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you were, she was tracking last night. Yeah. EG was calling me. She's like, oh, I think I got somebody. I'm tracking a blacked out SUV with a university tag. Yeah, and for those that did not follow us last night on the after show, uh, her and her driver uh, make it into North River all the way into uh, follow them a little too closely apparently into a uh, a, a driveway or a driveway or a road and at that point they realize that they now are blocking in the blacked out university of alabama car and w- they've got to move to get out of the way for the <laughs> for the people they're tailing to get out yeah very paparazzi like yeah. on yeah. y'all's part yeah. yeah yeah but we love the hustle trust me we love the hustle eg thank you, thank yeah. you. i'm yeah. having fun okay well good i'm glad you are all right thank you eg we'll see you in a little bit uh, go follow Emily Grace on Twitter at MEG underscore sports, and you'll get all of uh, her updates there. And also at Next Round Live, follow us on all social media at Next Round Live. Here are some of the messages I'm getting from Auburn fans. Okay, fire decision away. makers from, from Auburn fans. Yeah, okay. And these are people I know. Decision makers never cease to amaze. This seems like an absolutely wrong hire to me. Uh, then this one comes over. Um, Proven recruiter, question mark, last four classes going back to 2021 Fresno. I don't know what the expectation at Fresno is. 70th, 2022 Fresno, 89th, 2023, 24th, 2024, 46th. Well, if you add 22 and 23, that was actually Washington. Your composite is, what is that, uh, 113? So you're looking at uh, 56. The 56th best recruiting class in two years plays for a national championship with Portal guys. Yeah, and that that's... That's good, but he cannot do that in the SEC. No, but yeah, I, and I don't think he will. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know who could take Washington over and make them a top five recruiting, uh, you know, hotspot. Well, I tell you what, I saw some uh, just real quick since you brought that up. I believe it was Pete Thamel here. I'm going to check Pete. Um, oh, by the way, Lane Kiffin has tweeted. Oh no. Oh yes. I, I will say this before you give us what okay. Kevin. I'm let's, sure let's some smart ass remote. Let's Forrester, give, I'll get Forrester a second to pull it but, up. Anyway. Yeah. Go ahead. Would Lance. you guys not think if you gave truth serum to some of the really respected SEC coaches out there, they were like, "Damn, I wish somebody else would have gotten this job." Yeah, no, no, no. I think from just watching our chat room, uh, Auburn fans were really cheering for Mike Norvell, and some Alabama fan. Well, some Alabama fans are cheering against DeBoer. But I think there were a lot of Alabama fans that didn't want Mike Norvell. Yeah, before I get to the Lane Kiffin tweet, uh, you just mentioned uh, who would take over. Pete Thamel, l- quick list, in no order, he says, for the Washington job, Lance Leipold, who, Luganville, if you weren't with us in the live show earlier today, said for his money, best one of the best X's and O's coaches in all of football. It would be interesting to see him get a bigger job than Kansas, see what he did with it. Jed Fish. Arizona going to the Big 12. This would be a chance maybe to go to the Pac-10, get a better job. Will not leave. The, I don't think he'll leave his kids because I heard an interview with him. He has sold that recruiting class he had that came in as freshmen and they improved a little bit. They were sophomores this past year. 
Uh, they're going to all be juniors together. They've only lost two players from that recruiting class of 23 players. Uh, 21 of them have stuck together and moved from freshman to sophomore and will be juniors now. And he said they all joked on signing day when they first got to campus and during the, the whole first buildup of this that someday – they're going to do a 30 for 30 on this group that we built Arizona with this group of people for four years. And the, the plan has always been the fourth year. They're a little ahead of schedule there in Tucson. Well, I look at it. Here's the thing to look at. Jaden Delora was your starting quarterback for Jed Fish when the season began, and he gets hurt. Noah Fafita comes in, and Delora never gets his job back when he gets healthy, and Fafita was that good. But Jaden Delora is still a quarterback that can play. So – I am just saying, for whatever reason, if a guy like Jalen Milrow was to take off, Kalen DeBoer knows quarterbacks, and I'm not saying DeLore would be that guy, but there are guys like DeLore that are available right now in the portal, and I would just feel really confident if I'm an Alabama fan, I think it will be Jalen Milrow, but for whatever reason it's not, you're going to have a quality quarterback. All right. um, so continuing that list just really quickly, uh, Jed Fish, Matt Campbell, always mentioned, Ryan Grubb, which if you weren't with us right when we started our coverage here, Brock Heward with us saying, I do not think that'll happen. I was surprised at how definitive Brock was about yeah. that, honestly. Well, he said that he's not comfortable saying, sharing some things that he has been told. Sounds like he knows there was a plan in place for this, and here comes the plan. Uh, Barry Odom, who, if you've lost track of the former Missouri coach, went to UNLV and had an excellent year with the running Rebs at UNLV. Chris Kleiman, Kansas State, very good coach. Kyle Whittingham, Utah, I would be stunned at that. I'm stunned. Uh, Dave Clawson, who's been a good, uh, done a nice job there at Wake. I would love to see Clawson get an opportunity like that. I think I would too. And Kalani Sataki at BYU, who players love him. Players love him, but I don't don't know if the results are 100% there. Mm -hmm. Uh, By the way, so Lane Kiffin, I mentioned, tweeted. I just stumbled across this a moment ago. Um, He tweets, looking... At next year's schedule, dot, dot, dot. The one thing about next year's schedule, it does not include the Alabama Crimson Tide. So I don't even know <laughs> I don't even know what Lane means on this one. But just out of the blue, Lane Kiffin tweets, looking at next year's schedule. They don't play Alabama next yeah, year. I, and you know, if you're an old Alabama fan, you'll remember that Alabama used to play Ole Miss like even – as a non-SEC game, they would play them in the regular season back when Bear Bryant was the coach. Like it would be Alabama Ole Miss, but it didn't count in the SEC standings because they had six others or seven other SEC yeah. games. Uh, I don't know. I, in my lifetime, I can't remember Alabama and Ole Miss not playing each other, and it just happens to be this year when you can get new coach at Alabama and the uh, outspoken loud Lane Kiffin. Uh, yeah, with a absolutely. good team. Yeah, uh, but they do not play Alabama next year. That was one of the things when the new schedule came out. Um, that a lot of people pointed out, and I don't know if some were happy, some were sad. I don't know if it was just indifference, but for the first time in our lifetime, Alabama faced zero Mississippi schools. I mean, Alabama and Mississippi State have played for a very long time. And, you know, one of the bigger things that, that – well, not one of the bigger things, but one of the side things that was talked about when Saban announced his retirement was Ryan Williams decommitting. Yeah. If you're Ryan Williams now as a wide receiver – and look, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know who the wide receiver coach is at Washington. If you said his name, maybe I do know him. But you oh, heard I would, I would not know Brock Heward say how good of a wide receiver's coach he is. I mean, if you're Ryan Williams, I think you've got to have the discussion. Yeah, right? I mean, I, I think all his options are open. You know, Holman Wiggins, the guy that was the wide receiver coach under Nick Saban, left and went to Texas A&M. You'd have to think maybe he looks there. Obviously, Auburn has always been in play for him. So he's going to look there. But, I, I you know. You, you would wonder if he stops and just kind of reevaluates and sees what uh, what happens there. Ross Dellinger points out Greg Burns, last three football hires. Greg Byrne, last three football hires as an athletic director. 2009, he hired a guy named Dan Mullen at Mississippi State. Yeah, and as much grief as I give you guys on where you put Dan Mullen in the it's great hire of coaching. Was a phenomenal hire. It was a great hire. It was off Urban Meyer's national championship coaching staff. He uh, went in there for 11 seasons and, you know, had double-digit wins, had him ranked number one. I would say the only problem with them was that Nick Saban was in Tuscaloosa. Dan Mullen lost to Nick Saban more than any other head coach ever, 11 times. Uh, Rich Rodriguez, Arizona. And before people say, ooh, he got fired at Arizona, that was an off-the-field situation. Yeah, it wasn't um, he, great, though. It's 43-35. and 35. 
I mean, it was okay. Arizona has not been a great program. He had one losing season out of six at Arizona. They had a lot of losing seasons. It's probably at Arizona B job. Yeah, 24 and 30 now in the Pac-12, so it wasn't a great conference record. And now Kalen DeBoer at Alabama. Well, by the way, the Arizona football job is a difficult football job. Jed Fish has made it look good this year, but it is a tough job. So Dan Mullen, Rich Rodriguez, Kalen DeBoer, his three hires, one that uh, you'd give Mullen an A, a, I state. would give Rich Rod probably a B. B. And, and uh, I think DeBoer will end up being an A. Now, look, if you all you do is compare Nick Saban and Kalen DeBoer, then I don't know what you're going to get great It's going to be if you compare Nick Saban to anybody that had been hired today. That's right. Kirby including, Smart included. Including Bill Belichick and Kirby Smart. You're going to come up disappointed. We because of the parody, we will never see what Nick Saban did ever again. Yeah, ever I would again. I would agree. But I do think if Kalen DeBoer is there 10 years, which would make a lot of sense, the guy's only 49, so you could really milk another 20 years out of this guy, I really believe he will win multiple national championships. Zachary Neal writes and covers the Oregon Ducks for USA Today. And he says, what a week for the Oregon Duck fan. Your biggest rival, Washington, gets blown out in the national championship game. Your coach turns down, listen to this, the most prestigious job in college football to stay at in Eugene. You get a five-star wide receiver in Evan Stewart. Your biggest rival sees their beloved coach leave for the most prestigious job in college football. Pretty good week if you're an Oregon Duck fan. A uh, really good week. And, and back to what uh, when Brock Hewer joined us doing mornings in Seattle, if you're a, a Seattle sports fan, I mean, you just got to be like, what in the hell has happened? We've lost one of the best coaches – In the history, not only of Seattle, the only one to win a Super Bowl, but one of the best coaches in the history of football. And then we finally think that we've got a team that's going to the Big Ten that's got an elite coach, and he bolts for Tuscaloosa. I I gave you DeBoer's record versus um, Dan Lanning and versus Steve Sarkeesian. I'll throw Lincoln Riley, who is considered to be a pretty good coach in there, Throw those three in there, and he's seven and zero against those three guys. Yeah, I mean, you can't get any better than the seven and zero. Um, a year ago, I think Alabama fans would have been Lincoln Riley, although there would have been that that little asterisk. We got to get the defense right. They would have been super excited. Lincoln Riley would have come to Tuscaloosa right now today. They would have much rather had Kalen DeBoer. And honestly, me being a USC guy, I think. Uh, if you could have traded Riley oh, for DeBoer, you might have I, done it. I would trade Riley you, right you've now liked for DeBoer. DeBoer. No, you've liked DeBoer. Yeah. This is and I, and I still think Lincoln Riley's a really good coach. Now we're going to see how he adjusts to NIL and prioritize what that culture should be in uh, in Southern California and what he's going to do defensively. But, I mean, right now, I mean, I, I just I haven't seen a weakness with DeBoer. You can blame recruiting, but when you're going from places like Sioux Falls to Fresno and taking over a train wreck of a program at Washington – it really is tough to get the recruiting going that quickly. E. Gibson in Seattle. Uh, he's I'm in Seattle. Glad Carroll stepped down. Uh, not happy about DeBoer leaving. Had that program going in a good direction. Uh, away from this, just briefly, because Brown joked about it with several guests today as he sits in his Miami Dolphins uniform. The National Weather Service is warning all Chiefs and Dolphins fans that you must, quote, cover all extremities, including your head and face, if you're attending the game this weekend, it will be extremely dangerous temperatures to any exposed skin as you sit in the sands at Arrowhead on Saturday night. What is yeah. this, Pluto? That's a no for me, dog. <laughs> no, I'm not. on my couch. All I right. ain't going. If they're not going to move it to Miami, they should not allow fans in the game. That's the only safe thing for the I, NFL I, to do. I mean, minus six yeah. real temperature, wind chill below that. How can you go to a game, watch a game, and cover all extremities, including your head and face. How do you see the you game? Can't. Well, I mean, employee 13 is walking around like that right now, but <laughs> I, I don't think you can. You guys were at the 2000 Iron Bowl, the rain sleet game. I was. You'd be shocked I left at halftime, but no, I will I, never put myself in that situation. I don't care if it's a Rams NFC championship game. I ain't sitting in conditions like I, that. Uh, I was out We had tickets. Me and a buddy of mine had tickets to the Iron Bowl, and we're walking up to the stadium, and, I mean, they are trying to sell tickets left and right. And I see some guy trying to sell tickets. I said, where are these? He goes, oh, top row, new upper deck. I said, I'll take them. Yeah. Yeah. And my buddy's like, what are you, are you kidding me? We're in the lower bowl. I was like, you'll thank me for this. Trust me. And we go up to, and it's covered. And so we sat there and shivered. 
But I never got sleeted on. I, I can tell awful. you that. Yeah. Uh, uh, worse than being cold, wet and cold. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Did uh, you have the over, by the way? Wasn't it nine nothing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Josh Pate, uh, he says, one coach tells me, puts it like this on Kalen DeBoer. He goes, look at his record and sit there and think, how many times did he have the second best roster on the field? Now imagine when he's got the best roster on the field, what his record will be. Yeah, look, I'm not taking anything away from Nick Saban because it's never, as you said, going to be done again. But Nick, Nick Saban, I think outside of maybe a Georgia or LSU game, 99.9% of the time he had the better roster. I, I was just going to look just real quick. Um, That's one of the reasons you go 9-4 and four against number one teams. Though. That, that does help, right? I was just going to look to see how often this year you think that was the case as I pull up their schedule. Um, well, as you pull that up, just back to what Brock Heward said, against Texas, if you looked at the defense, Texas would have had nine of the 11 starters, if you could just pick in the sandlot. Against Michigan, Michigan would have had nine of the defensive starters of the 11. That tells you a lot right there. Um, they played Oregon twice. I don't know how you feel about Rod. I don't know enough to go comparison. I would say at best they're even. Oh, Oregon's got a better I roster. I think Oregon's is probably yeah. better, so that's two if, games. If you go by the 24-7 composites, it's yeah. Oregon. At USC. Uh, USC. USC's got a better roster, roster, so that's three. Texas is uh, four. Yeah. Uh, Utah, there's no way Utah's got a better roster than Washington. I think it's good. Oh, I, think, I think it's close. I mean, okay. I, again, if you want to go by the composite, I would say that Utah has the last two classes combined, 22 and 23, are higher ranked than what you had Washington. And then Michigan, which they lost. So, uh, you have 4-1 and one this year. Those would be the only, of, of everything they played, the only time he had a worse roster. And again, another uh, side note, Isaiah Bond officially is in the portal. We've talked about that all day long. 24-7 sports updating their portal um, window there, best available by position. Best available wide receiver in the portal in 2024 was Oregon commit from Texas A&M, Evan Stewart. He's now considered to be the second best wide receiver that is in or come out of the portal. Well, don't say Isaiah Bond. Isaiah Bond entered the college football transfer portal Friday and is now the 2024 cycle's number one wide receiver, edging Oregon commit and former Texas A&M playmaker Evan Stewart. Wow. I just, I, hey, look, I think Evan Stewart's the ultimately better receiver. Isaiah Bond is really good, but he had better coaching. He had better quarterback. Would you um, guys give me that? Yeah, I, I would say Evan Stewart is probably viewed better than Bond, but I think Bond developed a ton oh, this yeah. season. Yeah, he's really good. That's a big loss if he does, in fact, go somewhere else. Real quick, non-Alabama story, too. Wesley McGriff, who had left Auburn to go to Texas A&M, is now back at Auburn as a defensive coach there. So... Um, several things happening around college football and around the SEC, but uh, Wesley uh, was not a Aggie very long, if ever, in fact, he left to go there. I don't know that he ever even moved out of Auburn. <laughs> so you're saying it's like... Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll be back. Hang it back um, up. I don't know why I'm, I'm into acting all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm not sure, Jim. Play acting. Uh, yeah. Evan asked this question. In the eyes of Alabama fans, what's the threshold for success next year? So give uh, me what is a success for Kalen DeBoer in year one. I think 10-2. 10-2 and, two. Ten and two in the college football playoffs hosting a first-round playoff. That game. only meets the level of a success, right? I mean, that's minimum level of success. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. Is oh, it? yeah. Well, a college football playoff is the minimum level of a success. Well, let me ask okay, you. Okay, so wait, real okay. quick, though. But Saban went 10-2 and two last year, didn't make a college football playoff. No, they only lost one game last year. I'm not talking about this past year. I'm talking about... I still feel like we're in this year, if that makes any sense. No, it's so next okay, year. Okay, well. You're so last year. In 2022, they went 10-2 in the regular season and obviously didn't play for the SEC championship, nor did they get to a college football playoff. If he goes 10-2 and two and gets to a college football playoff with that brutal ass schedule, yeah. that's, a, that's an A job. It, it is, but I do believe that's the minimum level of success. You, As an Alabama fan, you would never call missing the college football playoff success. Yeah, okay, so, okay. Uh, the and this follow up question: At what point would fans say this year was a failure in the first year of Kalen DeBoer? And I think if you miss the playoff, yeah, pure, pure and simple, if you miss yeah. the playoff, it's a failure. Yeah, I mean because we're going to twelve teams, That's and right. Nick Saban was there almost every year in four. Yeah, yeah. I would say from this point forward, uh, you're in the playoffs, or you're not in the playoffs. And when you're not in the playoffs, it's a failure. When you're in, it's uh, 
it's uh it's a good season when you win games it's a better season when you win it all it's a great season tim ask it next round live um any idea when alabama a day is it has not been announced in light of nick saban's retirement they've obviously not announced that i don't believe they would have announced that yet anyway uh, but he's asking, will this be one of those games where fans show up in attendance uh, to show their support for the coach? That has become a popular thing to do in a lot of places. Well, I would say it's a challenge to you guys. Um, and, you know, my minor was in what, Brownie? Uh, public relations. Public relations. Um, if I wanted to um, pack the stadium and make it look good for recruits and make Kalen DeBoer feel welcome, I'd also make that the day – that uh, come on out to a day when we'll be dedicating the field, uh, Nick and Terry Saban field. Oh, interesting. So you would, you'd build a crowd in there, huh? That's, that's, uh, yeah. You're not going to do that in a regular season game. You're going to give them the A-Day game. No, we would also do that in a regular oh, season Oh, would you? Game. Okay. Yeah. 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 We would, at that point, we would, we would unveil the first ring of honor. Right. Nick and Terry Saban will be the first people into the ring of honor. I don't need to pack a crowd out for a regular season game, Brown. Football does Brown, it you need itself. to take a break. I, I actually do. Yeah, yes. go ahead. I, I, I went to the bathroom when I got us bourbon uh, about 30, 45 minutes ago. Yeah, uh, I, I went gotta, to the I bathroom. I got to make a call in a okay. second when Brown gets back. Uh, how long do you guys want to go? I mean, I've got family coming to town later, but I'm good to go as long as you guys want to go. Uh, I will tell you, um, I I was I'd planned on being here until next Tuesday. I'd pack, so I'm good until next Tuesday. Oh, wow. Rockstar probably has more plans before that. I do have an interview that I have to do at 4.30, but uh, outside of that. Bobby's listening in Kansas City. Jim, I heard your report about the Dolphins versus the Chief. Can confirm. I'm a displaced Tuscaloosian freezing my ass off right now. Right. But thanks for watching in. Hopefully we're warming you up. Bobby, let us know. You're excited about Kalen DeBoer or do you, not? Do you think that's ever a selling point for the family? Not DeBoer. DeBoer doesn't care about the weather. But I'm one of those few weirdos that I like rain. Now, would I want rain 300 and plus days a year? Probably not. But I, I do love rain. But if you're in Seattle, that's the way it is. I've got a couple of friends that live there. And you wonder if the selling point to the family is weather's a little bit different in Tuscaloosa. Now, it's a damn furnace when it comes to the summers. But, but I, I like the furnace. I like the sweat. Uh, Kyle, I, we haven't reported that yet because – um, I just don't know if the family has been has been notified, but we are aware of that story. Yeah, and um, yeah, and is, and we're heartbroken by it uh, because he is part of our family up here. But we're we're not going to talk about that, it yet because yeah. uh, we don't know who who all has been notified about that situation. Um, we're continuing our live coverage here. Bonus coverage brought to you by our friends at Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. As we said here. Um, there's a lot of you that would say, uh, let's take Denny's name off the stadium. And I 100% would be okay with that because he also has his chimes, right? Denny he, chimes. He does. I, I'm not a big one about stripping names off, even when something – I mean, look, I, circumstantially, it depends on what happens. Um, but you hate that history ultimately strips a name off. But I guess we're here long enough in a couple of thousand years, even if saving goes on stadium or field, there's a good chance he gets stripped off. Oh. Somebody burn in hell for that? Well, I mean, I'm just saying that who's going to win more than Nick Saban? Well, I'm saying if we're here thousands of years, you never know. Oh, yeah. Could be Sean McVayville by then. I'm just not, I'm not saying that there Alabama will never be greater than, but I said thousands. I didn't say hundreds. Do you think Alabama softball had to agree on a scholarship for his daughter and part of the deal? Uh, Seth, we talked about this a couple of times throughout. She is the number eleven prospect. Uh, in the country um, when she went to Washington, who has a great program. Absolutely. Uh, she has room there. And uh, Patrick Murphy probably already had uh, – she probably already visited or he'd visited her. She would have been on Patrick Murphy's radar 100%. Right. This, this isn't the preferred walk-on that has a roster spot because dad gave a million dollars, right? That's right. That's right. There's – there's room for the number 11 prospect in the country in any sport uh, at the University of Alabama. But I will say if she was probably just somebody that would have shagged flies in practice, they probably would have made room for her. Yeah. Um, Lady Red is watching up there. Um, Lady Red said, exactly, this is about softball. They're hiring, they're hiring Kalen DeBoer to get a Lexus in town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, third baseman, shortstop, slap hitter, uh, great speed. Uh, that would be a change. 
if that was the world we live in that would be awesome but you know she may I, you know we're not going to announce her transfer or any of that here because we don't know but um she is a, an unbelievable softball player and alabama leads the country in attendance every year so it's not like she would be leaving a great program like washington which is a great softball program and going and playing off the radar she'd be Moving to the SEC, where 12 of the 13 softball-playing schools make the NCAA tournament every year. Yeah, our resident softball player is Forster's daughter, and I'm sure, uh, much like Forster's daughter, they all watch college softball, and so I'm sure she's very familiar with this Alabama program, and you know, maybe Pat Murphy did recruit her, for all we know. Uh, Miles, uh, will uh, DeBoer bring any transfers with him from Washington? The problem there is that they have had, um, you know, Penix and a couple of their receivers were out of eligibility. Meanwhile, the guys who still had their eligibility, Odunze, the big wide receiver, is going to be a first-round guy. You think he'll be with the second receiver? I think he will, yeah. I think after Marvin Harrison Jr., it will be a first-round guy. Oh, yeah, or Malik Neighbors. It will be one of those two guys, and I think more than likely top 15, worst case, top 20. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, you know, you – you have a, a running back who also has left. Not that Alabama needs running backs at this point, uh, who's left to go to the NFL. So I don't know who he can bring from Washington yet, other than the joke you guys are all wanting a center that can <laughs> that seem to set it softly into Michael Penix Jr.'s hands all year long. Um, uh, really, the 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 the. The excitement and the finality of eventually this being Kalen DeBoer's job is a surreal experience because it is still hard for me to believe that Nick Saban isn't the coach anymore. And as and we will get back into you know DeBoer being the coach and the the portal and the roster, which is very important to next year. But as I watched Reese Davis's interview yesterday, last night, and I've watched it three times now. I haven't seen it. Is it really good? It is good. It's about five minutes long. And I just go back to this. Did, did you run out of content to watch being up here last night? Or? <laughs> no, no, no. I, just, I go back to the part I go back to every time. And listen to me here because I'm being serious. The part I go back to every time was at 2 o'clock, he told Greg Byrne, at three o'clock, he called him back and said, I'm "Sort of, I'm, I'm waffling." And Reese asked him, "Was it a tough decision?" And he said, "Up until three fifty-five, I didn't know which speech I'm going to give to the team." And I'm on the phone with Miss Terry at three mm-hmm. fifty-five, and she says, "I'll support you either way. If you want to go another year, I'm in. I'll give you everything I got. If you if you want to call it quits, I'm in on that too. Whatever you have to do." And he says. I walked in and I gave the um, I'm leaving speech and, and, but to be at three fifty five and not know. And then he goes on to in the interview to say, he's like, you know, he talked about being tired and everything, but to say, you know, it's inevitable for all of us. And if I had, if I had committed to another year, then it, I was going to be in a year to year situation. And I didn't want to ride the program down like that. Well, I don't think he ever would have ridden the program down, but I'll tell you this, I'm very indecisive on a lot less important decisions. Yeah. But man, I hate that for Nick Saban to, to be that unsure of something he loves that much and how impactful he is with not only the program, the university, the state, college football in general, for him to really have to come down to a final minute decision like that, that's tough. Like I would have thought, you know, after the loss, he really sat back, which I'm sure he did, but I thought he was at complete peace with this decision. Well, so that does jump out to me. Yeah, and we had heard yesterday that story that he had told Greg Byrne at two o'clock and then called Greg back at three o'clock. It's like, but I don't know, man. Let's 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 tap the brakes on this. And like he said, it was right up to the meeting. But I, I flash back to our visit with Chris Lowe the day after Alabama's loss in the Rose Bowl when we were still out in L.A. And Chris said that at one point Nick Saban said to him, if you're considering retirement, you've already retired. And I think he was true to his words. I think he, that probably crossed his mind when he talked about going year to year. Like, here I am considering retirement. I'm already retired if I'm considering it. Yeah, so, but aren't we all year to year, really? We, we, we are. Day to day. We are. But he says you cannot plan and run an athlete, a, a successful athletic program or a business operating on a one a year to year plan. You got to plan out 
three years, five years down the road to be successful. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to question him. I mean, he knows and what he, he's and doing. And he said, all of a sudden, it's because I can't be honest in telling people. And what's exciting for me, you guys are saying the interview is 25 minutes long. Oh, my. I've only seen the five-minute and 30-second version. So there's more content for me to go out there and consume. Um, but I remember Hope, when I was on the coach's show, with the radio show, hey, hey, coach with him this year. And I asked him in one of the breaks, you know, you know, the first break, because he'd sat down when we were on the air. I said, how are you doing? And he, he said, I'm tired. I said, I'm a little tired, but hanging in there. And it didn't dawn on me that, you know, he probably had never said the word tired before. Uh, but he referenced that, that it had taken a lot out of him this season. So uh, as we sit here and we're excited about the next coach at Alabama, and it seems to be a, a great hire by everyone who's in the football circles, and we'll see what it turns into. You know, I'm still sitting here coping with, you know, 47 hours and 30 minutes ago, the greatest coach of all time walking in and telling his team that that he wasn't going to coach anymore. And 47 hours and five minutes ago, he was still deciding whether yeah. or not he was going to do that or not. Well, pretty wild. And at this moment, according to reports, uh, the predecessor, his or his uh, replacement, will uh, be walking into a meeting telling his team that he is leaving. That's what uh, is reportedly going on right now in Seattle or very close uh, over the next few minutes. Uh, I, I would keep an eye on this. I walk back in as you guys are talking about transfers. I don't know if you mentioned the defensive back from Washington that's already hit the portal. Matt Zenit says all Pac-12 quarterback Jabbar Muhammad has entered the transfer portal. That's according to Chris Hummer and, uh, and Matt there with 24-7 Sports. He had 46 tackles, three picks. Um, and it, it was the second team uh, all Pac-12. Yeah. So, I mean, the guy can play. He was a guy that Brock brought up multiple times on Unlock when we talked about him. And one of those guys that he felt like, you know, along with Michigan and Texas, he could play. Uh, so you've already got one transfer from the Pac-12 to play defensive back in Tuscaloosa. I don't know that you would take that one. I don't know if it's something that Kalen DeBoer would want. But I do think, Jim, to your point, you got to start watching that now. It is easier than ever if a guy is just in love with a head coach to follow him to another school. You've never been able to do it that way. But if a guy can play at Washington and Kalen DeBoer likes him, he can easily transfer to Alabama right now. I, I'm not going to act like I know. Yeah, Debonny Jackson's that other corner you're right, talking right, about from, from USC. Uh, USC, yeah. So is he? I, yeah, I, he's already I, in. He's yeah. already in. And I don't know. I don't you know, pretend to know how good Muhammad is. I watch Washington games, but I don't, I don't break down the tapes. So maybe you can tell me how good he is. I do know this, though, that you've got Calum Downs back there as a DB as safety. Uh, it's, at some point, I'd like to know if those Washington assistants who are coming with DeBoer are on the phone with these Alabama players. And, and I know Alabama can't see anything yet, but I would love to see some um, I would love to see some of the Alabama players jumping in and celebrating the DeBoer hire, and I've yet to see that. Maybe it's out there and it just hasn't popped up on my timeline yet. But, uh, like, for instance, Forrester, can you search Jalen Milrow or Caleb Downs or anybody like that and just, you know, guys you know are coming back? And I don't know if there's anything out there. I looked at Julian Sayan, and he hadn't put anything. Like, still top of his timeline is his picture with Saban, like, from December 11th. I haven't seen him do a whole lot. So I don't know, I don't know how the Alabama locker room is feeling yet about the hire. I know the fans seem to be – a little mixed in places. People who know football seem to be really excited. Well, you know, one of the places they were strong that we really didn't talk about was the offensive line. Defensive line for Washington got pushed around a little bit, but they've got two guys, a junior that was a first-team Pac-12 all-performer on the offensive line and a redshirt freshman that was a second-team all-performer. So, you know, it, it, some of these guys, I mean, whether it's one or five, are going to follow Caitlin DeBoer and that staff. Yeah, you would have to think. And again, as you say, as we were saying, it's never been easier, right? Um, never has there been a time where you're able just to immediately. Um, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll read this. If you wonder how it has been received um, in Seattle is Dave Mailer, who is on uh, the not Brock station, the other station in the afternoons. 93.3. Yeah. That's softy, right? Uh, yeah, softy. Yeah. Oh, you know him? Yeah, I've been on with him before. Oh, have you? You've been yeah. on with Softy? You know who used to? I've, I've been, I was on him with him once, too. You know who used to work with him? Uh, I do not. Uh, Warm Moon. Abby Chen. When Abby she, Chen. When she left here to go out to Portland, she did some work with Softy as yeah. well. So he retweets uh, Washington's cornerback, Jabbar Muhammad, in the transfer portal, quote, 
just take me outside and kick me in the nuts, will you? So he's not taking this well. <laughs> right, he's not taking this well at all. The chat room's going so fast. I think it was our buddy Greg in Pell City said that Ryan Williams, the highly coveted wide receiver, has liked the tweet that DeBoer was hired. Oh, there oh, you go. He? Yeah, I don't know if that's legitimate or not. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that means. I guarantee that'll get uh, both Mike Elko and Hugh Freeze's attention. Uh, here's Caleb Downs. I'm the biggest. I'm the biggest piece Peace out. out? No, that's not good. The wow. biggest deuces? Can, can, can I just, I mean, and, and I'm not, I don't know what Caleb Downs means by that. I'm the biggest number two. I don't, I don't know he could. I would strongly recommend, especially men our age, not trying to read into tweets and Instagram posts and social media reactions from kids that age. I mean, can we get little T to come bust that down and tell us what <laughs> Caleb Downs okay. is talking about? Taylor. Tyler, Taylor's you, still here. Tyler, 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 you come here too. Uh, Taylor, Tyler's not going to know. Taylor, come in. Uh, Tyler, Tyler knows all. Taylor, uh, you, you, using your um, 23-year-old brain, he says, I'm the biggest with the deuce signs. Does that mean he's leaving or staying or something? What do you think? Uh, I have no idea what he means by that. Uh, I, I think Thank little T is going to be better. Yeah. T, little T, come here. Yeah, Caleb but, Downs, what's he saying there? Ooh, that's cryptic. <laughs> I think that was after the hire. Yeah, one hour ago, Caleb Downs. Is that deuces like I'm leaving? I don't know. I feel like you could read it. I feel like he's saying it, and I mean, he obviously knows the way that he's saying it, but he's not going to say something. If he's saying I'm out, I don't think he's going to straight up say that. Also, if he's saying I'm I'm the best, I'm back. He's I'm the best. He's, I'm the best number two in the oh, world. He's also yeah. Jersey number two. I'll right. point out. So right. So I feel like he is probably the only person that really knows what he's trying to say, but it can be taken either way. I don't know. That's yeah. yeah. Again, but it could be that, peace out, right? I'm out. I mean, that is what this typically means, but I don't know. Yeah, again. I'll, I'll read into it. Somebody said, Jesus, these guys are old. I mean, yeah, these yeah. two couldn't figure it out. They're 23. I know, but the, we're the last ones that should be trying to figure it out. I thought we gave it a better guess than uh, they did. I hope Cole's right. That's a USC. Yeah. Deuce. I'm the biggest. <laughs> I'm Fight the biggest on. Fight on. <laughs> yeah. uh, so much fun. So much yeah, fun. Bud Light. Uh, we appreciate Bud Light so much. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Uh, weekend's here, man. Pick up some cold Bud Light. You know, there's nothing like the weather might not be conducive to that. As I drink bourbon on a Friday afternoon. I've already had my Bud Light. Uh, Going in one of those beer caves on your way home, walking in, looking around and seeing a suitcase full of Bud Light, taking it home, and just getting on some of these message boards if you're in Alabama or another fan base where you guys can dog out Kalen DeVore. Alabama fans can get to know him a little bit, but do it over a smooth, delicious Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy, our friends at Bud Light. All right. It is official from Kalen DeBoer's point of view now. He has talked to his team. Is that correct, Brownie? Uh, reportedly, that meeting has gone on now. I have not seen confirmation that it has actually happened, but uh, the multiple reports as much as an hour ago was that there was a team meeting in Seattle at 1.30 Pacific, which obviously will be right now. Well, Adam Rittenberg is saying Kalen DeBoer has now informed Washington's team that he is leaving for Alabama. According to his source. Yep, there you go. I just now saw that. Yeah, you're right. So according to his source, that meeting has taken place. So I would imagine Alabama makes it official sometime in the very near future. And um, the, the, uh, the university will at least announce it. And then if that was a face-to-face meeting, which I assume it was, um, then probably tomorrow, Monday, Monday is a holiday, Tuesday, he would meet the media and... You know, that, that is not necessarily something you've got to do right away. I'm sure he is thinking, I want to get to recruiting as quick as possible. So, Kalen DeBoer might tell Greg Byrne, hey, let's fly to Tuscaloosa. I'll recruit Saturday and Sunday and Monday. Yeah. And if you want me to meet the media Tuesday at some point, we'll work that in the schedule. But I, I'm going to recruit first. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of rush on that. No, I, not I, at all. I would rather, if you're growing priorities, you prioritize talking to the roster first, right? Yeah, that is priority number one. You getting in front of these guys to keep them in Tuscaloosa uh, than going in the other direction. Um, 
Welp says Dunaway can't leave until it's official. I think it's official. Enough. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that. Yeah. That's I don't. I don't know when this show is going to end. Maybe Brown does. I do not. But uh, I'm turning along. But I ain't spending the night here tonight. I'll <laughs> tell you that. You're done with that. Yeah. I yeah. I, I don't know how long I got in me, but I, I kind of thought. Um, I kind of. Corey says I don't know what I'm watching tonight, but I guess it won't be Dunaway walking room to room. Thank I, you. For, I'm kind of disappointed. They, in that, by thank them. you for everybody who watched last night. I tried to entertain as much as I could or talk as much as I could, but there were times I had no voice left. That's a Texas emoji, says Barrett, by the way. Barrett? Yeah. Uh, Barrett Hunley. It's a Texas emoji. I'd seen some others that said. Well, it looked like a peace sign, not a you know, hook em horns. Right? Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. Um, Brian says, I don't, I, the, the reason we're sticking around here is I kind of thought um, – that Alabama would make this official sometime in the very near future and that we could kind of put a nice bow on this with Alabama uh, absolutely uh, uh, making the announcement there. And they have not done that yet. I thought maybe when the team meeting was over um, that that would be a time where Alabama would make this official. So uh, that's kind of why we're hanging around here and seeing if they go ahead and make this official. But according to the sources, our buddy Bruce Feldman reporting this as well, uh, that he has told his team now uh, that he's taking the Alabama job. Lugan Bill was with us uh, during our live show, and obviously, like everything, that is on demand right now. So you can go back and watch Lugan Bill's thoughts. He tweets, looks like Alabama football got themselves a hell of a football coach today. The guys won everywhere. Congrats to Kalen DeBoer. I have yet to see, and listen, fans are going to be fans, and I know some Alabama fans are like, I don't know a whole lot about Kalen DeBoer. I'm not fired up. I'll see. I know rival fans are going to be like, you got your first – Fourth choice, fifth choice, sixth choice, whatever. This guy sucks. Brian Harson, 2.0, all those things. That's what rival fans do. I have yet to see a respected football guy say this is anything but an excellent hire. Well, hey, look, and if you didn't see the interview that we had on with Brock Hewitt about 30 minutes after the announcement, I suggest if you want some true insight, a guy that really knows him, a guy that covered the program, and a guy that knows him on a personal basis where you know they were in constant contact, listen to Brock Hewitt. He is a national voice. He is a very uh, objective guy, although he loves the Huskies. But this guy would shoot it straight, and I think his breakdown of Caleb DeBoer has got to excite Alabama fans, and it's got to concern other fan bases in the SEC. Yeah, I mean, I think, if anything, him being a former Washington quarterback might make him a little more critical of him uh, in his departure, right? Yeah. You know, in his departure. Why would you leave Washington to go there? It was, you know, the pro, that's a good program. You know, I think the program made him a little bit, and he was the exact opposite. He's like, no, 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 it's a massive loss. This guy is terrific. You know, built the program back to where, you know, where I expected it to be and all those things. The thing that jumped out most about me, and I think this would excite Alabama fans, is that Brock very much felt like, um, Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator, would not be coming or would be coming with Kalen DeBoer, would not get this job, that they'll go bigger than Ryan Grubb. And I think if you're an Alabama fan, not having to hire a coach, now go find an offensive coordinator I'm comfortable with would excite you a little bit. You've hired a head coach, and if his offensive coordinator that he liked, that, oh, by the way, you wanted to hire last year comes with him, I think you're pretty excited. Yeah, about I think that. you got to be really excited. I, I'm surprised. Yeah. I thought that was the. The inevitable that Ryan Grubb had been there for a couple of years and you love the offense and you trust that he knows, you know, all the surroundings there, um, that he would have been a guy that was promoted. But, you know, Brock says it's more than likely going to be a guy with head coaching experience. Yeah, and some of the names we've seen thrown out are pretty impressive head coaching names. We'll see if any of those are true. Chris Lowe following up Rittenberg's report that DeBoer has now, in fact, told his staff and his players he's leaving for the Alabama job. So it's just, uh, as you said, a matter of uh, jumping a plane and getting to Tuscaloosa now. So uh, and the weather's yeah. cleared, so that should be a good yeah, flight. That's right. right. He's coming in behind bad weather now, yes. I, I know we've had a Bobby Petrino middle-of-the-night press conference. Have we had a Saturday press conference this big in the SEC? Tough to remember, but you know... uh, But you're not going to do it on Monday. Yeah, Monday is a holiday. Martin Luther King uh, Jr., Dr. King's birthday. You don't kick the NFL games until 3.30, so you could still do it early enough where you would get get some eyeballs on it. I I, I don't... This is bad of me, but it's been a busy week. I'm not even certain of the big basketball games tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's almost like DeBoer probably is in Tuscaloosa tonight. He's probably meeting with the team. He's probably trying to meet with assistants, hold this together. But if I'm Greg Byrne and Caleb DeBoer, I almost... Do this press conference on Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think recruiting is the most important thing. You get in, you meet with the team as quick as you can. You talk to those guys. If it's Caleb Downs, if it's Isaiah Bond, if it's whoever is thinking about being in the portal, being in the portal, you're you're immediately meeting with them. 
you're getting on the road as quick as you can and getting in the major high schools in this area and shaking the hand of the head coach and letting him know I'm the next Alabama football coach. Yeah. And you worry about the press conference when it – that's one of the least important things you'll do yeah. right now. Alabama on the road, 730 tip in Starkville against Mississippi State for basketball tomorrow. Yeah. If I uh, – and I have, again, no sleep. I spent the night up here on our gym locked in. I, I've got 15 SEC coaches written down. I can't remember who coaches Mississippi State now. And football? Football or basketball? Yeah, football. Who's a Mississippi State football coach? Oh, my now? gosh. Why am I drawing a blank? Why can I not say this? <laughs> Scott says Jeff Levy. Yeah, Jeff, yeah, Levy. Jeff Levy. Wow, my God. Good job, Forrester. <laughs> Woo, yeah, been a long back row. I mean, no offense to Mississippi State, but Jeff Levy's the coach oh, no. there. Yeah. No, no, whatsoever. We could. Yeah. I mean, I was sitting here going, I wrote down, I mean, I even got freaking Clark Lee right. Yeah. I got 15 of them. I'm like, how come I can't remember who's coaching freaking yeah. Mississippi State? It's because it's Jeff Levy and Jeff he hasn't Levy. coached a game yet. Okay, yeah. go ahead. All okay. right, so your point being. My point being, okay, 16 coaches in the SEC. And just just how good these guys are uh, right now. But where does DeBoer stack in for you guys? And I know this is stuff we'll do all summer long, but. I, uh, I, I mean, would, I've got I got Smart number one in the country right now. Kirby Smart? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. You know, I told a Georgia fan yesterday, I was talking to a, a massive, went to school at Georgia, has been to all the championship games and all that. And I said, you now have the most accomplished coach in the SEC. And he goes, oh, I've thought about that already. Yeah. Yes. I think based Until on takes the Falcons, yeah. what <laughs> we've seen, I think there's no doubt Kirby's won. It's either Brian Kelly or Caleb DeBoer at number two. Wow, you'd go so that, that high, number quickly. two already. Oh, huh? yeah. I mean, who else would you have in front of him? I don't know. That was why yeah. I asked the question. Yeah. I couldn't remember freaking Jeff Leppy's name. Yeah. I'm not. I, there's no way I can stack 16. No, it's order. one. Of, it's one of those two. And if I could take well, I mean, one, Sark is. I mean, you're going Kelly and DeBoer. All due respect, Sark two was in the playoffs this year. So yeah, well, I mean, Sark did get beat. He's two and or he's zero and two against Kelly DeBoer. He is zero and one, right? Zero and two. I mean. Call it what you want. Alamo Bowl last year, but he still lost to him. He's 0-2 oh, okay. straight up. There you go. That's a good point. I, I'm just I, saying. I, too, forgot the Alamo Bowl. Yeah. Or as I like to call it, the, <laughs> the Levy Bowl. <laughs> no, oh, Kevin, me and, me and Brian Kelly did not break up. I said it's one of the two. <laughs> yes, you did. I, I was very disappointed in how that season went. There's been changes made. I fully expect LSU, although they're not going to have the elite quarterback, to be able to come back and be as good as they were last year. So you go Kelly over Sark? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let I me mean, know when look, Sark look, wins a big game. Look, I mean. Um, big 12 championship was not a big game. They were like a 50-point favorite. Right, right, right. Brian Kelly, Kelly won. Is, Brian Kelly. Well, what did you just say? What big games have Kelly won? My gosh, Dunaway. Brian Kelly? He's, he's, he's won like. Coached. Much like DeBoer, he's won like multiple national championships at a different level. Yeah, and he's coached in. Two college football playoffs and for and a, a national and championship. And a national championship well, game. Coached, you don't get there by not winning big games. He coached, coached in a college football playoff and lost. Didn't win that game. He lost a BCS game, right? Yeah. Didn't win a game to get to that one. So he didn't win any big games along the way, you don't well, think? I'm just asking. What He's are the, the head games? coach at Notre Dame. I'm going mean, to imagine. You're, you're saying Sark winning games. He had won big games. I'm just saying what big games has Kelly won. Well, I mean, but, my gosh. I mean, he beat just, Alabama. Yeah. I, I don't, so did Sark. I don't think anybody would put Sark in front of Brian yeah. Kelly. I, I mean, just, Sark and his wife. Texas fans. <laughs> I think even his wife is like, you know, he's yeah. coached for national championships. <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, Sark's going to be top five. I would take Sark over Kiffin. Top five in the country or the SEC? SEC, which puts him maybe close to the top ten. <laughs> but you guys know I was saying before are, I even pe- entertained. People are not going to believe this in the long DeBoer, run, but you were. Yes. I told you guys weeks ago, I believe win or lose, Kalen DeBoer going into next season has solidified himself as one of the top five coaches in all of college football. And now he's got resources, so I would just say – Watch out. I wasn't one of those guys that said it with Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. I wasn't one of those guys that said it with Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M. But I am saying it right now with Kalen DeBoer. And this is going to be one of the more difficult follows, if not the most difficult follow, in college sports history. And you guys remind me, when when John Wooden left, Gene Bartow was the guy. He got to a Final Four and couldn't handle it. I think he got to a national championship game and lost. But he, he couldn't handle the pressure, yeah, he right? He could not. It yeah. was because because they were not happy because they yeah. didn't win the national championship. Yeah, I was looking at Brian Kelly's big wins, but, I, I you know, uh, Gene Bartow, I'd have to look this up, but I think it was a Final Four I and an Elite that. Eight. And so, uh, 
but it wasn't national championships. And they were used to just winning it every single year. Mm-hmm. And I guess UCLA fans at the time never like, accepted the fact that that ain't going to go on forever. Like that went years without a loss, right? They went like 88 games oh, yeah, or it was something an without a loss. amount, yeah. Uh, UCLA, he, uh, he made it to the Final Four and lost in his first year as the head coach following Wooden. And, and won the Pac-12, was 28-4, and 13-1 in the Pac-10 or Pac-8, whatever it was back then, um, and, and then made it to the, to the Final Four and lost and uh, won the third place game. Uh, UCLA the next year was 24-5, and five, so he only lost nine games as a UCLA coach, 52-9, and nine, but it wasn't good enough. And they lost in the Sweet 16. You, you covered, I don't even think I ever met Gene Barto. Maybe once or twice. Uh, he was kind of before me. It was an amazing time to be alive. Yeah, well, look, I mean, he did an incredible job, like, putting this program together and, and putting him on a national pedestal for a while and had an incredible career. But internally, I mean, was Barto one of those guys? I mean, there are some insecure coaches out there. And, uh, I never saw him as an insecure coach. And I'm not saying he was. I'm just asking, you know, there's some people that can't handle big jobs. They're very good coaches. They can't handle a big job. And we'll see whether or not Kalen DeBoer can go from, again, a B job in Washington to what is one of the elite programs. And we'll see if he can handle that big job. Obviously, Bartow couldn't. I've got a feeling DeBoer can't. Yeah. What was crazy is Gene was amazing at Memphis, had a losing record one year at Illinois, and – that one year at Illinois was sandwiched in between the, all the winning he did at Memphis, losing record at Illinois, and then he followed up John Wooden. Damn, he's a job jumper, isn't he? It was early on, it seemed like. You know, this is kind of funny. I had not thought of this, um, but Matt Hinton, who covers college football um, for a number of, of outfits over the years, <laughs> points out that, that... you can't think of right now. <laughs> no, I was just looking at his thing, and he's got so many outfits on there, I didn't really want to dig through it, but he does a nice job, I'm sure. Points out that one of the most popular conversations over the last five, six, seven, eight years of college football is who replaces Nick Saban in Alabama. And he said, how many people said Kalen DeBoer? Never. Never. No, never. I mean, we but, talked but, about Dabo. We talked about, you know, I, I remember saying, I think the last time we really talked about it was a couple of years ago. And I said, I don't think we don't know the name that is going to yeah, be on this I, list. I remember saying the guy may not even be a head coach yet, guys. He may not even be a head coach yet that's replacing well, He was. Him. It was he in was, Sioux Falls. But it was in Sioux Falls. We didn't know he was a head coach. Well, I, I thought to myself that, you know, in 2020, Sark navigated with Nick the pandemic. They won the national championship. And if that had been the year he walked away, I think Sark would have moved into that position. Good chance, yeah. Yeah, good chance. Yeah. I mean, even – I mean, you heard uh, – I forgot. Hell, I can't keep up with this. That Sark, or excuse me, Saban pushed for Tommy Reese to get interviewed. Yeah, you know, I I, I have heard that. That's probably more for experience. I think, you think that's exactly what yeah. that is. Is that he probably knows Saban at the time might even have known that DeBoer was the main target, and whoever the target is may or may not want to keep Tommy Reese. I took Tommy Reese. If you're Saban, you look at it from this perspective. Tommy's a young guy. I took him away from Notre Dame. And now, after one year, I've left him without maybe a job. The least I could do is get him an interview for this job so that he could say, you know, forever, he could tell people he interviewed for the Alabama job. When a coach calls up or when a AD calls up Greg Byrne and says, tell me about Tommy Reese. Oh, I interviewed him. I was very impressed with yeah, him. Yeah, look, and I'm not going to be surprised. Uh, you know, Sharon Moore is probably going to be Michigan's next head coach. But if Sharon Moore hired Tommy Reese? No, I would, I would not be surprised at that yeah. at all. Uh, former Alabama great Roman Harper now with the oh. SEC Network is going to join us for a couple of minutes. He's in a Prada store? And he's about to smoke a cigar. Look he's at in this. a Prada store? <laughs> this is going to be one of my favorite Harper visits. Oh, my God. Gonna... I've, I've got bourbon. I'm drinking bourbon right now. I want a cigar to go with my bourbon. Hey, and I see you with the Rams bands on your, your wrist. I know you're a Saints slash Panthers guy, but because neither one of those teams in the postseason, we pull them for a little Rams. No, man, I'm all Detroit, fellas. Uh, Detroit has a lot of my former teammates slash coaches. Uh, I like Detroit, man, just because I, the crazy thing is everybody's going to pick the Rams, and I totally understand why, because the Rams have been there. They've done that. Detroit has not, like, ever. But the moment Detroit wins this game on this weekend, um, shout out, man, everybody's going to start to believe a little bit more. Would I like smoking cigars, you think? Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Uh, 
Hey, you know, guys, I just wish we all were in person right now. Honestly, this is I've, I've been a whole vibe my whole day. I went and looked at a couple of houses. I've been touring. I'm completely in off season mode. So Boy, you got a different life than we do. Mm-hmm. It must be nice. But smoking the cigar, I know you like them, but is that a celebratory cigar? Because I have been hyping this guy up for a while, Harp. I think it is the best hire you could have made under the circumstances. Nobody's ever going to do what Nick Saban did again. But Caleb DeBoer, everywhere he's been, he's won. You saw what he did the last couple of years at Washington. And I think he's going to be fantastic in Tuscaloosa. Oh, you got your little bourbon. Yeah, you did. I, I do. I'm not, I'm not missing, guys. Uh, today's just a winner's day. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not having this for a celebratory, but I will say this. Um, just the odds are not in Alabama's favor. Anytime anybody's had to ever replace the GOAT. I was sitting there with Paul Feinbaum just 48 hours ago thinking about just going through the days. Who replaced John Wooden? Who replaced Phil Jackson? Who replaced all the other greats? It, the odds are just not in your favor to get this right. So whatever coach this is going to be, I guess they're going to be – the, the, the deck is stacked against them. But I do actually really, 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 really – like and appreciate Kalen DeBorg and everything he's been able to do successfully as a head coach uh, in the college ranks. So with that being said, you, you can't deny his record. Now, is it going to be hard? I, dude, I can't even imagine how hard it's going to be to replace the greatest of all time in college football. Not only that, but Alabama lost two games the last two out of the last three years and the sky was falling. So the moment he loses his first game, which it's going to happen, I don't know when, but it will happen at some point. Uh, I can't wait to see how everybody reacts, how he handles it. And then at the end of the day, I worry less about him being a coach because I think he does that extremely well. I get I, He honestly gets everybody to buy in clearly by just looking at his record. But how is he going to continue to recruit at a highest level down there in the South where I don't know if he's had to do that before? Can I ask you, do you believe – that winners just win because I know it's NAIA and moving on up, but is there something to in, in your travels in both broadcasting and business and in life and in football that people who win at everything they do, they're just winners and it doesn't matter what level we're talking about. And we don't, it doesn't matter whether it's in sports or business winners just win. Do you believe in that? Do you buy into that? I, I, I do. I, I think if you're a winner, it's a mentality. It's not just a, it's not on the scoreboard. It's it's a mentality. It's a way of life. Everything you do is in a winning fashion. So with that being said, I, I, I like the hire. I didn't know he was an option. Um, so when I first heard about this, uh, when Nick retired, Kalen DeBoer was not on my radar. And I, I applaud Greg Byrne for going through the channels to make this happen because this was not it. There's no perfect answer for this equation. Uh, it was going to be tough. It was going to be hard. And I think Kalen DeBorg has that winner mentality, and he's won everywhere he's been. So with that, you you anticipate winning. My only my only hiccup is like, man, and I'm just telling him about a pitfall that's out there. Is does he win enough? It's been it's going to be so hard to replace and to live up to whatever this standard that Nick Saban has built. Because, hey guys, I was there before that, and the standard is completely moved, and it's no longer what it used to be. And everybody feels the benefits of that, and we're all so much about what have you done for me lately that we don't actually remember the bad times. But uh, hey, I'm I'm totally all in, and I, you know, I'm with Greg Byrne and his decision, and I will always support and rep the the Alabama. So it doesn't even matter at that point. I'm going to be with him regardless. Now I just know I got to try and get behind Kalen DeBorg. I just hope he's able to retain some of the guys that are on staff to kind of help you kickstart. I, I would love to know all of those things. Yeah, Like, Kalen DeBorg, okay, that's cool. Check the box. But for me, it's all about all the other things. Who's on the staff? Who do you retain? Who do you let go? Like, who adds value from here to continue to keep this thing going? Because the ship has been going great for 17 years. So now, how hard of a left turn do you want to make to continue to win at the highest level? Roman Harper with us, SEC Network, uh, as we continue our coverage of Alabama's hiring of Kalen DeBoer. The school still has not made it official, but he's already told his team, according to multiple reports, that he has taken the job at JD, Alabama. JD, shout out. They love the Prada behind oh, me. Got to love it. it, it <laughs> my boy said thank you. Got to love it. He's got off-white pillows, too. So yeah, and by, <laughs> big time over here. Hey, by the way, <laughs> I, I start smoking cigars tonight. 
tonight's the night. My uh, first one. Tonight's the night. Tonight's Jimmy night. follower. Off-white. We got we got the off white pillow. Oh, wow. oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> I mean, is this somebody's house or, or? Yeah, this is somebody's house. I got my cigar holder. You know, oh, no. oh, oh. I got to get that too. It's, it's, no, I can't it's, afford that. It's, it's level, different it's tax level, bracket. Guys. I can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> Jim smokes his first cigar tonight, uh, and he continues his vomiting tonight as well. So um, don't inhale. Don't inhale. Whatever you got do, it. Not got inhale. it. <laughs> That's what you're going to do when you inhale. Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, given the choice, and I don't know what Kalen DeBoer will do. I know Kalen DeBoer has been successful everywhere he's been. We'll see what he does at Alabama. But given the choice, Harp of a guy that's like. I want to be the guy that replaces the, you know, I want to be the second guy. I don't want to be the guy. I'd rather have the coach that says, I don't have a problem with that. I'll be the guy that replaces Nick Saban. I'll take that challenge on. I mean, given the choice, you'd rather have the guy that's willing to do that. Most people would say it's not the smart move, but it's the attitude I'd rather have as a fan. Well, not only that, but I mean, it's the same thing when I just listened to Nick Saban earlier today in his uh, presser with ESPN, his is uh, whichever one, you know, well, he only gave it to them. It was that, hey, look, there is no perfect time, right? Alabama is an ultimate job. It's a top three job in the country all the time, maybe top five. And so when you understand that, these jobs just don't come up enough. And so when you get the opportunity, you jump at it. And are you willing to address the challenge? You understand what's going to be out there, the pitfalls, and you understand that. And all you do is you attack it the same way and the same approach as you had every other problem in your life. And so you go out there and you attack it day to day. You understand the pitfalls that are out there and you go for it and you understand and you learn and you grow. You continue to suppress your ego and just continue to see what's out there. I I, I applaud Caitlin DeBoer for doing it. And, and you're right, guys, it's going to be really hard. And the odds are against you, but we're going to see what happens. I'm excited because they got a big time coach. I didn't know that he was going to be the option for me. Like I said, I'll be, I'm interested in who he keeps, who goes, who's going to be on the staff. And from here on also because of the, the transfer portal, not so much as who leaves. Well, of course I'm interested in who leaves, but who comes? Yeah. I mean, to the portal, uh, you didn't live it as a player. You're very familiar with it. Now it is the new, uh, it's just a new way in college football but Isaiah Bond's already in the portal. I mean, if you had an opportunity to talk to these guys, they have got a now a coach coming in that has won championships at a smaller level. He's played for a championship at this level. What would you tell these guys? Because, you know, I know you're an Alabama guy through and through, and I brought this point up with, to you a couple of months ago that I don't know how many Roman Harpers we're going to have left. We're wearing the Letterman's jacket, traveling around, watching the basketball games, glued to the TV that is all about Alabama. That is probably dead. But if you could get in there and tell the guys, you know, give this guy a little bit of time, at least meet with him, right? Damn, I mean, you're a happy guy. It's dead, yeah. man. It's dead. But I mean, I know well, what you're oh, saying. Number one, I, I applaud you. And I really want to question. I would love to see the tape of you actually said Roman Harper, number one. Um, n- number two, I, I thank you for that. And you're right. I would tell somebody like Isaiah Bond is like, look at the offense that he just came from. He's going to have the top wide receiver in the draft. He like, this is what they do. Look at the offense that they build around. This is going to look different, but they still win at a high level, which is what you come here to do. You come here to compete against the best and to be one of the best. Just look at the track record and trust the people around you. The thing about Alabama that I love the most, now that I'm on the other side of it, I looked up into where I was at, okay? I'm from the state. I didn't grow up an Alabama fan. I chose Alabama, and they chose me before that. But I made that decision. But seeing it all from this side of it, going through the NFL, being on the other side of it, talking to other guys that went to all these other schools, like Alabama, if you look at the best coaches of all time, on the, the you know, up there on the greatest of all time, you got Bear Bryant. He's related to Alabama. Nick Saban also comes from Alabama. So they've been fortunate enough. But Alabama has grown it organically. It's not like they've thrown a whole bunch of money at it and solved the problem that way. It has happened organically through time. And sometimes you're going to have hits and misses. You're going to have lulls and highs. And I'm sorry you were on the greatest empire and the high of all time. And just because that changes doesn't mean the support changes, doesn't mean the fans change, doesn't mean everything that it has to offer you, that A club bring when you walk off from there, 
that doesn't change. Those are the things that are so important when you get on this side of it. Um, and I know it's really hard to talk about or really understand when you're on that side of it, but uh, that would be my, what I would say is like all the other things that Alabama has to offer you outside of just being a great football player and trying to get to the NFL. You know, you know I'm interested um, if you were to talk to the Alabama fans right now mm-hmm. and you know they're as good as they are because they love it so much and they they show out in droves but everything they've been through now over the last 17 years if you were to address the Alabama fan base going into this off season into next year what would you say to them I mean don't don't actually I need you to double down on what you were last year because last year was the first time I've seen in years that Alabama fans didn't exp- show up and expect to win, that they actually cheered like it mattered, that it, it felt different inside the stadium. I, I didn't feel like people were spoiled. I felt like they were honestly excited to be there and nothing was guaranteed. I saw them lose that game versus Texas, and then all of a sudden, the moment, everything changed. The next home games, Tennessee, LSU, the big ones that mattered, they showed out in big ways and they made a difference in that game. Like, don't lose that because this team next year and going forward, they're going to need those best efforts for the for the fans. So if you can affect the game in that way, affect it. But at the end of the day, like, man, you choose Alabama for bigger than just a coach. Like, you choose Alabama for, like, everything else. And so you choose Alabama because they have 18 national championships. And they had 12 before Nick showed up, which was still more than everybody else. So, like, you got to understand that. But it all came organically. And so – the coach, uh, it takes the right synergy and everything else. And, hey, look, Kalen DeBoer can still go out there and win another chip in the next two years. And, like, don't be surprised if that happens because the stock, I mean, the cupboards are still full. It's not like Alabama's bare or, or doesn't have talent. That's not an issue. Or nor will it be hard to recruit there either. So just remember all those things. And, yes, Nick Saban was great. And somehow or another, Nick Saban is still going to be around. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. He's – Keeping in office at Brian Denny, but as I pointed out to someone today, he's also got a house in Jupiter, Florida. You won't find anybody that loves really? Alabama more than me, but uh, Jupiter, Florida, better than Brian Denny. My, my brother already said, like, bro, you knew he was retired once you saw the house on Instagram. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, what are we talking about? I saw it. He called it to the day it happened. Yeah. You, you don't buy and that you know, for a secondary house. <laughs> yeah, Lance called it the day we did the story. Here's Nick Saban's new house. He's like, this is his last year. Yeah, that means he's going to spend more days in Jupiter, Florida to become more tax efficient than I am in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, just tax purposes wise. It's just, you know, I can fly from to and fro, but at the end of the day, I mean, I'm just trying to be a better businessman. That's yeah, right. hey, hey, one more thing to uh, to point out there, one more observation. I love it when people come to my house and my tacky friends, I'll call them, are like, why do you have a white couch? I've got a white couch like that. I'm going to say it's not restoration hardware like that probably is. Is this restoration hardware? It is. It's the cloud. He said, yes, it's the cloud. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Restor- wow. He said, hey, not everybody's afraid of white <laughs> couches when they come to house. His tacky friends. Yeah. It's, this it's, thing it's, wipes it's, off it's, easy. It's, Everything goes off. I've got off a cloud. It. It's good. not restoration, but the white. Hey, your, your man's got the look there. I like it. Yeah, man. This is what we do, man. My man, J.D., his name is John Damon. I work out with him. John. We got standards over here. Yeah, we do have standards. Right? We have standards. Thank you. Thank you. We have standards. Uh, Harp, we appreciate High end cigars. Yes, high end cigars. Good bourbon. Cuban, yes. Yes. Uh, thanks for jumping on with us, Harp. It means a lot. We appreciate it, buddy. Have a good weekend. Man, thank you guys for always having me. You guys always know how much you mean to me. So well, what, cheers, what, my friend. Yeah, what's, cheers. cheers to you. What's the yeah. brand? I got to go buy my first cigar tonight. I'm running by a small uh, shop. What's the later. brand? Uh, th- this is actually a Romeo and Julieta. A Romeo and Julieta. And he's uh, smoking a uh, special edition... Monte Cristo. Um, a special Ooh. edition Monte Cristo. Okay, I'm just going to guess because I was really good on the cloud. I'm probably going to get dogged out by our listeners and viewers <laughs> for knowing that it was Restoration Hardware and just seeing the PRA and knowing it was Prada. But I'm going, going to say in oh, your, your glass, are you drinking bourbon? I am definitely okay. drinking bourbon. Okay, hold on. I'm going to say that you have got some Weller. A, a special edition Hill Rock. 15-year-old Hill Rock. 
15 year oh, hill oh, 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 oh. you guys are doing it up man uh, you uh, he, you don't even know where the hell prattville alabama is anymore <laughs> <laughs> you can't pick it out on a map about it forgot about <laughs> you it you can't even pick it out three three four area code can't even pick it out on a freaking map uh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you harp have a good weekend enjoy it all right fellas y'all be good all right see ya uh, i can't i want to be with dunaway when he picks up the romeo and juliet to monte cristo and flips that price <laughs> over uh. All right, not my okay, first cigar. I'm, I'm going to search right now. Yeah, you go swish or sweet for your first one. No, I am not, but I, I'm buying one of those two tonight. Okay, uh, okay I'm going to have to roll no, on you I, guys. Th- I think we... I mean, I've, just, I've got people in my no, house like sitting in the same, driveway. I, I, right I, I, oh, my, sitting in the driveway. Yeah. I'm the same way. My daughter's got a talent show tonight. Uh, Alabama is at some point going to make this official. They have not done that, but it is uh, everything but official. Yeah, and how about uh, this? Kalen DeBoer is the head coach. If, if for whatever reason there is a press conference this weekend, uh, we'll carry it. We'll be <laughs> no live. Right? We'll be here. Set your alerts, as I always say. Make sure you've subscribed and set your alerts on YouTube. Follow us on all social media at Next Round Live. That way you know when we're live. Give us a thumbs up before you get out of here on YouTube, and we'll, uh, we'll have the uh, news conference for you. Uh, it's not too bad. The Romeo and Julieta, 1875. A uh, box of 25 is uh, just $209. Is that all? So yeah, what's less 20, than ten bucks? Yeah, a, a pop, please. Yeah. Go well, get you some on the way home, Jimmy. On my way to cigar. Have you country. really never had a cigar? Uh, I mean, not a real cigar. We had a place called Tobacco Leaf. It was in Crestline Village, across from Caddy Corner from Odie's. They were one of my first clients when I started working at Jocks back in '98. And so I kind of got into the cigar craze a little bit. I'm not a cigar guy at all. I gave it up quickly. Um, I don't know if you're going to like it, Dunaway. Uh, I will send video to Little T, and if she wants to send it out, she can. If she doesn't, it's fine. Just smoke them in the house. Maggie will uh, appreciate she'll, that. She'll never know. Uh, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to smoke it outside like a good husband would. Uh, Bud Light, man, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, cheers to Alabama fans. Uh, if you're happy, uh, clap your hands. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if you're not, then... Uh, you're probably letting us know about it in the chat room. Rockstar, who has uh, been uh, behind that board back there since 9 a.m. Central Time. Forrester, who's been back there since uh, God knows when he walked in and brought me breakfast today. Everyone else up here. Man, Taylor our, our and people Kelsey. have worked their yes. asses off. I mean, seriously, from EG and Tuscaloosa, yes. the guys in the back room, Reed's even creeping around extra hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, it's been a collective effort on a lot of different levels. It's been nonstop uh, since Wednesday. Yeah, and, and again, there's excitement with something like this. There's, you know, uh, a little bit of, I mean, I don't want to call it disappointment yeah the yeah. Unknown, unknown but kind of you know when you leave a chapter i know you hate finality i do but when you leave something like nick saban i'll say it one more time and i probably will never live this down until i retire if caitlin DeBoer is a, bu- a bust but to me greg byrne hit it out of the park and got the best guy available to follow up the ultimate legend which was nick saban or which is nick saban listen i don't want to end on a sad note but um he's part of our family uh, yeah so yeah. i do not do not want to leave the airwaves today and not mention this. Um, but we lost a, a co-worker, a friend. He's part of the podcast family up here with us today, the play-by-play voice of the Thompson Warriors, longtime high school football announcer it, when he used to do the uh, game of the week on uh, various radio stations in town. Uh, a friend of mine, really close friend to two of our co-workers up here, John Lunsford and number 12. Um, a guy who would come sit right here in Brownie's seat with Lunsford and LT seat and do a, you know, the next round preps every week. Uh, but Jerry Young passed away today from a heart attack. And we were in this show and we got the news. And it's, it's, it's numbing when you get that kind of news. But when you're on the air, you do your job and you keep doing that. And as we're winding down and the bourbon glass is running empty, it is starting to hit home. And I'm looking at this release from Thompson, who's, you know, praising his work for them and praying for his family. And you see his smiling face and a guy who is always loving life that he would pass away from a heart attack today. And to know he's not there and he's not going to be walking in and saying nice things to us like he did every week. It's just it's just an instant dose of reality. Well, you guys know Jerry a lot better than I did. I got to know him over the last couple of years just a little bit. And the only thing I would say he was always in a good mood, always positive, always 
uh, very uh, just engaging, just full of life. Yeah. yeah, and I don't, I don't cover. You know that they did such a great job with the high school football. I don't know if high school football is going to be the same next year without Jerry Young. I mean, he was one of the major names and faces, and. You know, we talk about finality. I mean, that's the ultimate finality. And uh, there's a picture of Lunsford and Jerry Young yeah. right there. Good dude, yeah. man. He loved high school football, loved what he did. And he and Lunsford did those uh, Thompson games and did the uh, podcast here. He will be missed. Great guy. And uh, very, very sad news. And I'll echo what Lunsford said on social media, number 12 as well. Uh, just, you know, pray for his family. Uh, he left uh, some family members behind. And uh, all those that knew him and were friends of his. And do this because you have an opportunity. 2024, it is going to be my year. I gave last year a C. It's this gonna is going to be it's going to be my A. It's going to be my year too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be my A. But I think you hug somebody that maybe you haven't. Tell somebody you love them. Call somebody you hadn't talked to in a while. Extend a bridge, an olive branch to somebody you've had a disagreement with. I think it is really, really important in today's decked up world. To give somebody a hug, tell them you love them, man, because you never know when that last minute's going to be. So, yeah. I don't know. I hate to end on a somber, sad, sad no, note like no, that. End, end on the upbeat. But uh, I, say yes to, you know, yes to the dessert, I yes to the bourbon, yes to the cigar. Almost everyone. I've only had a little bit of bourbon. I'm not talking like that. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is the new me. I feel really good about this. I feel uh, like everybody really should embrace people that they've loved in the past, they love now. Don't be afraid to tell them. It's one of the hardest things to say, sorry, and I love you. Do it. It will make you feel better. I promise you. That is, that is an awesome sentiment. We appreciate all the compliments over in the chat room. Thank you guys for being with us. The numbers on just the gym locked in blew us all away. Thank I you wanted for that. you here till Tuesday. I man. did too. Yeah. I hated Alabama got this right. <laughs> yet I hate that this worked out the way it did, I but know. it worked out good. Um, reports that Cliff Kingsbury could be the next head coach of Washington. Oh, no. Oh, boy, Seattle. That I mean, place is going to implode. Yeah, really? They go that's, from that's not a good hire. Carolyn mm. Kalen DeBoer oh, to uh, Cliff Kingsbury. He okay. couldn't win with Mahomes. Yeah. Hey, God bless you guys. And uh, we're back with you tomorrow. No, we're not. Well, if Alabama has a news conference, yeah, we yeah, are. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll Again, be back. That's why you set your alerts and follow us on social media at Next Round Live. Oh, so when they, if they have a news conference, yeah, we're course. doing a show? Yeah, we'll go live. If. Let's, let's, let's do one hour, though. Yeah. Is that fair? Well, I was we'll here overnight. You guys do the news conference. I'll yeah, take yeah, the we'll day. Take yeah, 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 we got it. You know, you know I would hate here. that. Zero chance. Everybody, enjoy the weekend. That's right. It's been a long, weird, weird, weird week. But looking forward to whatever 2024 holds college football is going to continue to be exciting this was to me the most unpredictable year we've had in college football we got a 12 team playoff you got uh the goat leaving so i think this is uh some cool stuff okay i'm gonna do something uncharacteristic i'm gonna uh -oh. let you have the last word go ahead and finish it up here oh it's like nick saban no really as we sit here 4 16 central time on friday january 12 2024 and the passing of one of our team members one of our family jerry young I think it really is ultra important as you guys go home, you go to your loved ones, your dogs, whatever it is, try to smile, try to realize what you have. There are worse situations out there. Enjoy life, enjoy the moment, and just have a great weekend.